so maybe we can start. Dear colleagues, I would like to welcome you to this afternoon session of the facilitative sharing of views. As per the schedule, I'm pleased to invite the representative from Montenegro, Mr. Sergio Mugosa, General Director of the Directorate for Climate Change within the Ministry of Sustainable Development and Tourism, to deliver his brief presentation. Montenegro, you have the floor. Good afternoon, my name is Daniela Racic. Uh, I work in the Ministry of Sustainable Development and Tourism, Directorate for Climate Change. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy because I'm here and uh, because I will present first biennial update report in from, uh, on my country, uh, Montenegro. And now I can start. Um, I did. Uh, national context, uh, Montenegro became a party to the United Nations uh, Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, as a non-annex one party on 27 January 2007. The Kyoto Protocol was ratified in 2007. Considering uh, that EU accession is a national priority, the approximation of na national legislation to parts of the EU ACQUI uh, regarding to in, uh, the environment and climate change represents a process during which the national legal framework should be strongly and increasingly shaped. In preparation of the board um, participated our Ministry of Sustainable Development and Tourism, Ministry of Economy, Monstat, Monstat uh, is a statistical office, and the Environmental Protection Agency. Project started date um, in June 2014 and the date of uh, completion December 2015. Montenegro, national context, uh, Montenegro can be characterized by the following parameters. General characteristics, uh, the area of the country is uh, 308,012 uh, uh, square kilometer. Uh, mountains country, uh, large, coverage, la large water coverage, uh, high quality groundwater, territorial sea water totals approximately 2,540 kilometer, square kilometer. Coastal zone represents 11% of the total territory. Agricultural land represents 22.4% of the te uh, total territory. Forests cover more than 60% of the national territory. Biodiversity hotspot in the Mediterranean area. Protected areas represent 11% of the te territory. And the uh, most important problems uh, environment are uh, for air and water pollution and waste management. Um, in, on this slide, we have a basic um, economic and social characteristics. Mm. Sorry. Uh, Montenegro has uh, five stationary meters, uh, thermal power plant Pljevlja, aluminum plant Podgorica, Vektra Jakic Pljevlja, wood industry, brewery Trebjesa Nikšić and iron works Nikšić. Um, country specific is issues. Uh, two majority um, emitters um, in Montenegro are uh, thermal power plant uh, Pljevlja and aluminum plant. As the total annual national emissions of uh, GHG uh, without removes are at a level of uh, 4,000 gigagram of carbon dioxide EQ, it, uh, it can be seen that emissions for, from thermal power plant Pljevlja and aluminum plant could each individually represent up to 45% and uh, that both together could represent up to 19%. Um, on this slide, we have um, present um, a GHG inventory. Um, the period of reporting uh, includes 1999 uh, per 2030. Uh, here, uh, Montenegro's contribution to total global emissions is 0.009%. And um, the total emissions with sinks range from minus uh, 364.57 gigagram carbon dioxide EQ uh, in 1994 uh, to uh, 4,703.27 gigagram in 1991. High levels of carbon dioxide sinks are the consequence of large forest areas in Montenegro, while low uh, levels of estimated emissions from agriculture are, are partly due uh, to the incomplete estimation of emissions due to a lack of statistical data. This fact, uh, as well as negative economic trends and the continuous decline of industrial production, has resulted uh, in relevantly low levels of emission begin recorded in some of the years during the observed period. 
Uh, on this slide, um, we present um, the total GHG emission expressed the carbon dioxide EQ by sector for the period 1990 uh, per uh, two, 2030 gigagram for the sector energy, industrial process, agriculture and land use, waste uh, and the total emission with sinks and without sinks. Um, on this slide, we have two charts um, who present uh, total GHG emission um, as carbon dioxide with sinks for the period 1990 uh, to 2030 gigagram and without sinks. Um, on this slide, the carbon dioxide represented the greatest share of the total GHG emissions, 24.6% um, uh, uh, to 74.5% uh, uh, followed by tetrafluoromethane and hexafluoroethane, which represented between 3% and 14.9%, methane represented between 10% and 27.5%, and the nitrous oxide represented between 2.3% uh, and 5.8%. Uh, sulfur, sulfur hexafluoride represented the smallest share in the total emissions produced uh, and ranged from 0 0.01 uh, and 5 uh, per 8%. Uh, 0.01, sorry, uh, to 0.07%. Uh, in line with the data that was available at the time of recalculating the inventory uh, chlorine fluorohydrocarbons emissions in the 2012 and 2030 were only estimated for subsector product use um, as a sub sub substitute for, for ozone depleting substances, refrigeration, and air conditioning. Uh, on this slide, um, we present um, uh, total uh, percent emissions uh, for four sectors, agriculture, waste, industry, and energy sector. On this slide, uh, we present analysis of key emissions sources and inventory comp completeness. The analysis of key sources and inventory completeness was produced based on the methodology provided by IPCC during, uh, um, using a TR1 approach. Uh, mitigation action, uh, actions and effects. Montenegro has developed two realistic scenarios. Scenario with measures, VM scenario, and scenario without uh, measures. Uh, scenario without measures, which include the, the original VM scenario extended by additional measures that are, all, uh, are not required by EU legislation, or measures which EU legislation allows flexibility regarding center, certain quantified requirements. And um, the scenario with measures, we includes 40 measures, Introdu introduction of best available technology in energy and industry installation, two, two measures for thermal power plant uh, Pljevlja and aluminum plant, and other measures for energy sector, transport, forestry, agriculture, waste management, tourism and service, and horizontal cross-cutting issues. Um, we have uh, priorities. The VM and VAM scenario do not include all the possible measures that could lead to a reduction um, in the level, level of, of uh, GHG emission. Only the priority measures uh, have been included the dues for which a sustainable reduction potential is, uh, in the GHG emissions can be expected um, in many case, cases also along with positive side effects. Uh, the 20 priority measures have been divided into three categories, top, top category, high pro uh, category, and medium pr priorities. Um, uh, this is on this slide. Uh, we have conclusion uh, for for measures. Um, it is evident uh, that the full implementation of a VM scenario could lead to a gross reduction uh, in GHG emissions uh, of more than 375 gigagram carbon dioxide EQ year from 2024 after the decommissioning of thermal power plant Pljevlja. Uh, first, and um, its replacement by uh, thermal power plant Pljevlja second in comparison with 2013. Description uh, of uh, domestic MRV system. Uh, as uh, an EU candidate country, Montenegro it, uh, is uh, at uh, the beginning of the process of developing uh, its uh, own MRV system under mitigation action. And the steps uh, proposed for the establishment of MRV system in Montenegro inclu included the following precise definition of institutional arrangement and process, definition of GHG mitigation action uh, and accounting, establishment of data collection and reporting re responsibilities, establishment of clear, clear and transparent reporting obligations, and verifi uh, verification and quality assurance. <clears throat> 
during the preparation uh, first uh, biennial update report, Montenegro have uh, many obstacles and barriers uh, for national GHG inventory, agriculture, forestry and land use sector, um, IPPU sector, uh, NAMA and energy sector. Um, support the received and needed financing technology capacity building. Um, the institutional setup um, and the capacity of the state have shown evident progress over recent years. However, there are still needs, gaps and obstacles that impede the future, future development of, uh, of climate-related activities. Currently available financial, techn uh, technical and capacity building support still cannot meet the growing requirements related uh, to the challenges of climate change. Bilateral technical cooperation across all sector needs to be enhanced and extended, expanded. Uh, technology uh, support received uh, and needed the financing technology capacity building. Technology required for the purpose of climate change mitigation. Energy efficient technology in all sectors of the uh, economy and in the housing and commercial sectors. Technology uh, that uses renewable energy sources, hydro, wind, solar and biomasses. Technology designed to efficiently use water, land, forest, coastal area and other natural resources. The introduction of low carbon modern technology, this will require continuous cooperation with the international organization and the institution, along with a review of the best practices and the implementation of various projects supported by international donors. Uh, financial uh, needs uh, concerning climate change mitigation. A number of mitigation activities have already taken place in the country. The government is still working uh, on securing additional financial resources. Dusandar Ipatu Montenegro has been allocated 37.5 million for uh, environment and uh, 31.1 million, 32.1 million for transport for the period 2014 and 2020. Uh, capacity building needed for mitigation proposes. Further support uh, is uh, needed to continue developing and consolidating uh, existing technical and institutional capacities along with efforts to integrate climate change international policies, program, programs and plans. Um, enhancing transparency of reporting and areas for improvement. First uh, biennial update report in Montenegro has been prepared on the first time. Measures are uh, elaborated in detail and sorted by priority VM and additional measures one. The technical analysis has contributed uh, to improve capabilities in reporting. Uh, it is important to point out that the mitigation measures in, in the field of climate change be taken into account in the planning of sectoral policies because uh, their sector in their development documents have not been taken into account this. Montenegro's government uh, has decided to strengthen uh, the administrative ca capacity until to 2020 in the Directorate for Climate Change and Environmental Protection Agency. And um, uh, we have uh, the answer to question that we received during QA uh, period uh, is methodology for assessing mitigation action and it has been submitted from New Zealand. And our uh, answer with question, the report provides data on the preparation of the greenhouse uh, gas GHG inventories for 2012 and 2030, and on the update uh, of the inventories for the period 1990 uh, to 2011. For the first time, the 2006 methodology of Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, was applied. Uh, and it require, required uh, the recalculation um, of the entire time series 1990 to uh, 2011 of the inventory produced based on the 1996 methodology for the proposals of the second national communication on climate change. The software tool uh, of the intergovernmental panel on climate change was used to prepare the inventory, but we which used um, uh, other methodology uh, during the preparation of the second national communication, uh, we um, used the methodology IPCC 1996 and uh, for energy sector, um, we uh, used um, LEAP, a longer range energy alternatives planning. Thank you for your attention and that's it. Thank you, Montenegro. 
Please also let me uh, reiterate that parties uh, should limit only with uh, two questions uh, to ask to us to the parties undergoing the facilitative sharing of views. And I will collect a set of questions from the parties. Uh, now, uh, the floor is now open for the questions. Yes, European Union, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to Montenegro for the very good presentation and also for your uh, first BUR, answering our questions as well in the written phase. Uh, you mentioned uh, in your presentation that uh, there is an incomplete uh, estimation of, uh, of emissions and that you also find some barriers in, in some sectors, including energy. Uh, taking this into account, could you tell us uh, what are your highest priorities in relation to greenhouse gas inventory improvements? Thank you. Now, New Zealand, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, congratulations on the publication of your first biennial update report and thank you for the answer you provided on our written question prior to the start of the session. Could you please inform us of any particular experiences or learnings from the technical analysis process that will help with the production of the next BUR? Thank you. And also, please, let's hear Mexico, and then uh, we will give floor to Montenegro to answer this first set of questions. Thank you very much. Mexico also wants to congratulate uh, Montenegro for the first BUR and for sharing with us their experience uh, in, in this report and the technical review. We want to pose a question regarding the technology requirements. Particularly, we found very interesting uh, the requirements on water, land, forest, and coastal and other natural resources technologies. So we will be interested in learning more about what uh, Montenegro thinks it, it would be useful for them in, in this matter. Thank you very much. Montenegro, the floor is yours for your answers. Thank you. Mm, uh, our, <laughs> sorry, my perfect, uh, my own uh, English is not perfect, but uh, I can try to answer. Um, for GAG inventory, the Environmental Protection Agency responsibilities for GAG inventory your chapter um, and um, uh, first uh, biannual update report uh, include uh, period 199 per, uh, to 2030. Uh, Montenegro currently developing uh, standardized uh, templates for the proposes of data collection. This information system will cover the data needed for uh, the GHG inventory. Uh, also, uh, Montenegro will improve the data for forestry and agriculture during uh, and waste during uh, preparation the second uh, uh, biennial update report include um, improve mrv system and uh, involved uh, uh, um, gender equality Uh, institutional arrangements um, for um, New Zealand, Zealand uh, institutional arrangements. Sorry, during the preparation uh, of the uh, first biennial update report, uh, we are involved the uh, Ministry of Sustainable Development and Tourism, who has uh, key responsibilities in the area of climate change. The ministry uh, is responsible for policy making and for adapting relevant regulations. Ministry of Economy also plays uh, an important role uh, in the area on, of climate change by creating energy policies and by establishing ob objectives and measures to increase energy efficiency. Uh, Monstat, uh, Monstat is statistical office who is responsible for statistical data. 
and the um, Environment Protection uh, Agency uh, who has responsibilities for preparing uh, GHG inventory. The drafting... Um, sorry. For, for the Mexico, sorry, um, I don't know um, your your question, your your question, but uh, I um, I will um, delegate uh, the question after come uh, in Montenegro. That's okay. Thank you. Sorry. I don't know. I don't have sufficient experience, and I don't involve the uh, on preparation first by an update report. And coastal area, I don't know really. Sorry. Thank you, Montenegro, for your answers. I think you can also share uh, some more information later, I guess. And now, Germany, you have the floor for your question. Thank you, and uh, thank you also to Montenegro. Uh, for the presentation and some of the answers already uh, provided. I would like to follow up on the, cap on the needs for capacity building. Uh, you said in your presentation uh, you identified um, some barriers, but also thanks to the technical analysis, you have improved the capabilities for the reporting. Uh, so my, my question would be to what extent the priorities or what the team of technical expert has identified as part, to the, as part of the technical analysis, to what extent it was also your priorities that you had identified um, beforehand uh, while you did the, the BUR exercise. Thank you. Now the US, please. Uh, thank you, and I'd like to commend Montenegro for um, applying the 2006 IPCC guidelines in their BUR greenhouse gas inventory, um, and also for submitting a very high quality greenhouse gas inventory. Um, it was noted that uh, the Montenegro greenhouse gas inventory team continues to need administrative and financial assistance in completing the inventory. Um, so my question is, has Montenegro set up institutional arrangements to meet these needs? Um, and uh, if you could uh, um, describe your experience with that. Thanks. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Brazil, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Montenegro, for your presentation. Um, my question is very uh, short. Um, I understand from your BUR that you have recently adopted a national climate change strategy. So if you could um, highlight the, the main, main areas of your strategy, I would be most grateful. Thank you. Thank you for these questions, and now uh, the questions are come to an end. I hope now, please, maintain Montenegro, the floor is zero for the answers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first, uh, I answer Brazil. Uh, we adopted the National Strategy for Climate Change, 17 September uh, 2015. And um, uh, in the strategy, uh, we uh, involve, in our strategy involved the INDC. Uh, and INDC is uh, in the progress uh, and uh, will be finished uh, in June uh, in order to ratify the Paris Agreement. Thank you. And the institutional arrangements um, during the preparation of uh, the first biennial update uh, report uh, were involved with the Ministry uh, uh, Ministry uh, Sustainable Development and the Tourism uh, has um, uh, key responsible in the area uh, of climate change. The Ministry is responsible for po uh, policy making and for adapting relevant regulations. Ministry of Economy also plays an important role in the area of climate change by creating energy policies and by establishing objectives and measures to increase energy efficiency. And Monstat, uh, who is responsible for statistical data, uh, and Environmental Protect Protection Agency, who has responsibilities for preparing GHG inventory. 
and that's it. Uh, um, and uh, Germany, uh, technical assistance and capacity building provide. Montenegro has uh, been granted uh, significant capacity building and technical assistance for a number of programs, projects and partners, partnerships by the following donors, European Commission and the World Bank, um, GIZ, uh, governments of Italy, Germany, Luxembourg, Austria, Norway, Netherlands, Greece, and etc. The greatest share has been provided by the European Commission and the UN who have supported proje projects, uh, workshops, studies, invitations and specific uh, specific uh, programs of uh, considerable, uh, considerable impact regarding overview capacity strengthening and technical assistance that's it that, that's it <laughs> thank you montenegro thank you Dear colleagues, now let's move on to Morocco. I would like to invite the representative from Morocco, Mr. Buzekri Razi, uh, to deliver his brief presentation. The floor is yours, Morocco. Thank you, Chair. Dear representatives of the parties, first of all, uh, Morocco would like to, to thank you for the opportunity to provide uh, its first uh, inputs to the facilitative sharing of views in the context of international consultation and analysis. Morocco sees international consultation and analysis as a cornerstone for building trust between developing and industrial, industrialized countries in the context of climate change mitigation. For many years, Morocco has been a pioneer in mitigation efforts uh, on the African continent. Already in 2001, as a host of COP7 in Marrakesh, Morocco developed a range of innovative approaches to mitigation. Morocco has one of the largest portfolio of CDM projects in Africa and is pioneering large-scale financing for renewable energy projects that will transform the Moroccan energy sector. As a host of COP22 in 2016, Morocco was one of the very few countries that enhanced its mitigation ambition from the level communicated in its INDC. Our NDC commits to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 42% below business as usual levels by 2030 if we receive sufficient international support. Our target for of 52% of installed electricity production capacity from renewable sources by 2030 ranks among the world's most ambitious ones. Both targets represent an increase of ambition by a full 10 percentage points compared to the INDC. So my presentation will contain two parts. The first part is a summary of uh, uh, the BOR and recent development, and the second part of experience and lessons learned in participation in the ICA process. Concerning the, the national uh, context, Morocco is a North African country it has an important facet on the Atlantic Ocean, about a length of uh, about uh, 3,000 kilometers, to which is added in the north about uh, five, uh, five, uh, 500 kilometers of coast on the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, it, it has a population around 34 million inhabitants uh, and more than 60% uh, inhabitants uh, is located in the urban zones. Morocco has an, an economic growth, uh, an average uh, economic growth uh, per year for about 4.3 percent since 2008. And uh, Morocco also faced to uh, phenomena uh, for climate change phenomena and uh, has has uh, many ecosystems of vulnerability like coastal areas, estuaries, and the fauna and flora, 
and uh, also uh, oasis. Uh, Morocco also is a water av uh, availability, a water scale country confronted with dwindling groundwater reserves and a strong dependence on rain fed agriculture. Water availability per capita was over three times higher in 1960 than is today. Uh, and since uh, 1960 to, to uh, 2005, the temperature increase, increase uh, from uh, 1.8 degrees C uh, and declining precipitations from 1 to 30 percent. Uh, Morocco also is the largest energy importer in the importer in the region and has ambitious plans for the renewable energy sector, as I said before. So, uh, yeah. Now, uh, cons uh, about the institutional arrangements. Uh, this is the, the institutional arrangement for the, the, the third uh, communication, national communication, and the first bureau, BUR. Uh, there is uh, the, the ministry in charge of environment and sustainable development. It is the, 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 the president of the, the, the committee of interministerial, interministerial committee. Uh, within uh, there is a unit, a UGP unit for for the management of of projects for all, also the third communication and the first bureau, uh, and also there there are uh, many uh, groups, uh, working groups, uh, dealing with uh, the uh, the green, greenhouse gases inventory, dealing with the the mitigation politics and measures dealing with the vulnerability and adaptation and also for the the, the third the national community uh, communication compilation and and for the the first bur concerning the greenhouse gas inventory Morocco has already prepared and communicated to the UNFCCC uh, eight uh, uh, inventories. The inventory for the year 1994 and inventory for the year 2000 and also 2004. And for the third and last uh, com national communication, the inventory covers the, the years from 2005, 2006, 2008, 2010 and 2012. The first BUR is based on the results of the inventory of 2012. Now okay, coming to the results of the, the greenhouse gas inventory for 2012, the net anthropogenic net emissions of greenhouse gas in Morocco are estimated uh, to uh, 100.5 million ton CO2 equivalents and uh, this is uh, this corresponds to an uh, emissions per capita of 3.10 ton uh, CO2 uh, equivalent. These emissions correspond to the balance of total greenhouse gas emission emissions for the different sources, gross emissions, and the absorption of CO2 through the vegetation ecosystems. The contribution of the direct greenhouse gas in that emissions, uh, we can say that the results of the inventory show the dominance of uh, the dioxide of carbon emission, which reached uh, 60, uh, 66.5 million uh, CO2 equiva uh, equiva ton equivalents, and this represents about uh, 66. Uh, 0.2% of the net national direct emissions of CO2. These emissions are uh, distributed. Uh, this, this graph, we can see that the, the energy is the most uh, emitting uh, sector 
for about 56.5%. Uh, and uh, the, in the second rank, the agriculture for about 21.3%. This graph shows the evolution of the greenhouse gas emission ratio per capita. And this ratio has increased from 1.84 tonic event uh, CO2 per inhabitant in 1994 to 3.10 tonic equivalent CO2 per in, uh, inhabitant in two, uh, 2012 in correlation with the socio-economic development experienced by Morocco during this uh, period. And the growth of emissions rate per capita in 1994 to 1912 uh, is 2.5 uh, to 2.9 percent, and this is due to to the population growth and improvement of the standard of living. Now we move to the analysis of trends of emissions per sector between the, the period 1994 and 2012. Uh, energy represents the largest greenhouse emission sector with 56.5% uh, in 12, uh, 2012. And the average annual growth rate of emissions in this sector between 1994 and uh, 2012 is 4.3%. Uh, it's even reached five. 0.1 percent between 2004 and 2012, reflecting the strong economic growth experienced by the country in the mid to, to 2000s. The most energy uh, subsectors that contributed to this growth were electricity generation, transport, and the households, with respective rates of 5.2 percent, 5.3 percent, and 4.9 percent respectively. The second emitting sector is agriculture. Uh, this, uh, this graph this uh, represents the evolution or the development of, uh, of emissions of greenhouse gases uh, between 2012 and, to, and 2030 uh, be, uh, versus the, the, the basis line. And this is the energy module, re, module remains the first emitting sector. The average annual growth rate of emissions for this module over the period, this period would be three percent against 2.82 percent for the overall emissions at the second emitting as the second emitting sector the emissions of agricultural module would evolve at an average annual growth rate of three percent over the same period the share the share of carbon dioxide is total in total emissions remains preponderant is with, uh, with about 70 uh, percent in 2012 with a trend to increase until to, uh, 2020 with uh, uh, about 73 percent in 2019 then there is a slight decrease by uh, 2030 with the 67.8% of total emissions due to the progress penetration of energy efficient technologies in the energy production mix. Now, now uh, this is uh, the institutional scheme of the national system for the inventory of greenhouse gas emissions. There is a committee, a national committee of inventory. Uh, uh, within there is a, a inventory unit in, uh, within the ministry in charge of environment. And this, uh, this uh, inventory unit is composed with the, uh, 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 in addition to the ministry of environment, for, with the ministries of industry, and uh, with agriculture for forests and energy. Uh, 
the diagnostic concerning the mitigation actions and effects uh, the basic investment for the implementation of energy measures is uh, about, is uh, was determined for about uh, 50 billion uh, US dollars and the mitigation uh, this mitigation potential is for about 50 million uh, ton CO2 uh, equivalent per year and the basic investment for the implementation of non energy measures is about 5 billion dollars and uh, the mitigation potential corresponding is about 20 million ton uh, CO2 equivalent per year. This uh, for total is uh, 55 billion dollar, uh, US dollars and the potential is about 71 million ton CO2 equivalent. And these mitigation uh, measures uh, versus the, the, bias the bias line, uh, by taking the baseline emissions according to the baseline scenario, the different proposed measures mitigate, mitigate greenhouse gas emissions by 54,000 54, and, and, and about 55,000 gigagram equivalent CO2 emissions in 2030, which represents about 33 0.2% in the of the emission from the baseline of the same year the mitigation measures and and policies uh, there is a contributions of uh, of namas to the mitigation of greenhouse gas emissions there are four, five namas developed by morocco it uh, concerns uh, number of uh, building or housing, number of agriculture, number of, uh, for household waste, and number for solar pumping, and number for solar roofs, photovoltaic in uh, the, 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 the buildings. And there, are, uh, there is also CDM uh, portfolio. Morocco has uh, an important uh, CDM portfolio. And uh, also, uh, regulatory, uh, there are regulatory measures, especially in building sector and uh, renewable energy sector. There, uh, these uh, measures contribute to mitigation uh, emissions. Now about the needs and the gaps concerning uh, the capacity building uh, related to human, regulatory and institutional. There are six cross-cutting mo modes of intervention. There is strengthening the legal and institutional framework, the improvement of the expertise and the, uh, and the observation, the regional variation, variation of the policies of combating global warming and prevention and reduction of climate risks, and uh, the fifth, awareness raising, empowerment of actors and capacity building, and last, promoting research, innovation and transfer of technologies. Concerning the capacity needs and gaps concerning uh, related to financing and monitoring and assessments, five interventions considered the institutional and financial engineering and the technical assistance and the capacity building and monitoring and assessment. To sum the, the needs and gaps in capacity building for uh, a global action plan, uh, the action plan for implementation of capacity building measures related to different aspects. Uh, there is a global uh, invest, global needs for about 111 million uh, of uh, uh, US dollars and uh, uh, approximately 89% uh, of, of needs related to technical assistance. Concerning the MRV, uh, Morocco uh, has uh, uh, established five NAMAs. And within these NAMAs, in each NAMA, there is a, there is a proposed 
uh, MRV system. Uh, the MRV system proposed, for example, in NAMA uh, waste is stated as follows for MRV for greenhouse gas emissions, MRV for sustainable development co-benefits, co and MRV for greenhouse gas emissions. And there is a process ongoing for other other NAMAs in the same uh, same uh, same time. Uh, and uh, there is uh, Morocco is uh, uh, now uh, undertaking uh, uh, work to is to establish and to to develop a, syst a national uh, MRV uh, system. Concerning the experience and lessons learned in participating in the ICA process, Morocco uh, submitted its first uh, BUR on 7 May uh, 2016 in conjunction with its third national communication. The technical analysis of the BUR took place from uh, 19 to 23 September 2016. Uh, from the, the, the examination, technical examination, we can uh, we can uh, uh, rise uh, to two main uh, axes. The first concerning the domestic uh, co coordination, or it's, it's related to domestic uh, coordination. Uh, the development of the first considered with the the preparation of the the three the third uh, national communication and therefore constitutes a summary of the national the third the national communication so uh, uh, th there was it was the basis for the preparation of morocco's uh, ndc and also the development of the 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 the, the third the national communication and the first bur process has raised the level of coordination among the various partners. And uh, uh, on the other hand, the value added of the technical uh, assistance of BORs by the technical uh, team of experts, the technical uh, assistance of, uh, uh, of the, Bureau, the BOR1 of Morocco pointed out some, some gaps uh, related uh, and emphasized some details to be presented to ensure more transparency uh, and uh, also respect uh, data tables as indicated in the UNFCCC reporting guidelines of BURs and also the, the quality of uh, BUR2 BUR will thus be considerably improved. I will end by this. Uh, this uh, thing. Thank you. Thank you, Morocco. Uh, now the floor is open for questions again. Thank you. Brazil, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Morocco, for, for the clear presentation. Um, Morocco is a, a regional leader in terms of CDM projects. So uh, I wanted to, to, to know if you could share with us this successful experience, particularly in terms of lesson learned. Thank you. Mexico, please. Mexico would like to thank uh, for this uh, very good presentation, very comprehensive. Um, we were very interested in your mention of the NAMA for waste, and in particularly the MRV for sustainable development co-benefits from this NAMA. I was wondering if you can share your experience uh, with us on, on how difficult or how um, how was your experience with developing this, this MRB? Thank you. In Sweden. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Morocco, for an interesting presentation from which I learned a lot. 
Um, a question relating to the capacity building needs, uh, which you addressed in the uh, BUR as well as in the presentation. Uh, I was wondering if the country has uh, identified priority needs that could be addressed in, in the short term to be implemented in time perhaps for the next submission, um, for the submission of the next BUR. Thank you. Thank you, Sweden. Now, Morocco, you have the floor for your answers. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for questions. We start by the, the short-term priorities for capacity buildings. Uh, the, there, wa there was uh, some few comments from the, the, the technical experts team regarding the, the gaps of uh, information uh, to uh, uh, tie to, to, to reporting. So, uh, so this is one, one uh, of the, the the axis for the the short term term uh, uh, capacity building. So to to strengthen uh, reporting, the the capacity of reporting and the, the capacity of uh, of uh, collecting data, also, and also to to enhance. Uh, uh, collecting data uh, for uh, some uh, uh, some types of of, of gases like uh, the, the anthropogenic gases uh, like HFCs, SFCs, SF6, uh, and uh, also the second uh, the second uh, uh, point is also uh, the capacity building. Uh, uh, related to 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 find to climate finance, and to, especially for for the the, the regions, the, the 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 local uh, local uh, communities. There was also uh, the first question about the waste uh, waste uh, waste uh, waste NAMA. As I I, as I mentioned the. Uh, the, the five ma NAMAs uh, established by, by uh, Morocco uh, includes uh, also includes MRV uh, systems, and these these are propo propositions of, of MRV, and uh, uh, we we uh, we didn't uh, experience until now. The, the MRV uh, systems uh, proposed because the NAMAs uh, uh, this is uh, the, uh, are not uh, financial yet, uh, except the NAMA uh, agriculture, which has uh, financial uh, support from GCF. For the question related to the CDM projects, uh, Morocco was uh, uh, approximately the, the first uh, the first uh, country from uh, Africa who registered uh, CDM projects, and uh, the 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 benefits or the lessons uh, shared from uh, from this from uh, CDM uh, mechanism. Is the, the enhance the is the, the, the institutional uh, uh, framework or uh, arrangements, and also the some uh, some uh, uh, the, the the projects developed by uh, by the partners uh, for and uh, especially uh, uh, public uh, public administrations for about sixty four percent. Of projects were uh, from uh, the public uh, administrations. I don't know if I cover all the questions. Okay. 
Thank you, Marco. Actually, you will have another round of questions. So, Switzerland, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Marco, for your interesting presentation. Switzerland will have the following question. Could the reporting and re review process could be improved to positively impact on the per perception of opportunities and benefits of participating in climate mitigation related activities? Thank you. EU, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. And congratulations uh, for your first PUR to Morocco. And uh, thank you also so much for your thorough presentation today. We noticed that um, you have mostly used tier one methodologies for estimating greenhouse gas emissions in the inventory. What are the gaps and uh, remaining challenges to move into higher tier methodologies for key emission sources? And also maybe you can elaborate on your key priorities for inventory improvements. Thank you. No, China, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Marco, for the very comprehensive presentation. Uh, I noticed that, I, I found that in the measures and the policy part of, the, of your presentation, I noticed uh, the household waste and the solar roof PV are really connected with the consumers. Can you share more information on the good practice on the implementation of these measures the our Morocco government take? Thank you. So Morocco, you have the floor for your answers. I start by the last uh, question, China, regarding the photovoltaic uh, uh, electricity production. Uh, uh, Morocco, uh, I think, Morocco has uh, has uh, an ambitious strategy for for uh, renewable energy, uh, and uh, it was uh, primer. Uh, importance to set a regulatory uh, framework to uh, to to success to 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 have progress in this in this field. So, so for the the, the there is a, a regulatory framework that allows uh, production uh, units pro separate unit productions from uh, the. Middle, uh, uh, medium size, medium size plants to product uh, energy from the renewable energies and to to share this uh, this energy to the, the the network, national network of uh, of electricity. Uh, For the question from uh, Switzerland, I think it was about the procedures and to how to enhance procedures. So uh, I think I think the the, the exercise of uh, of technical uh, uh, assessments of BOR was uh, very very important and uh, uh, to 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 come uh, to come. Uh, to, to, to get to get a direct contact 
with the uh, with the uh, uh, technical experts is uh, uh, is very uh, very useful and uh, uh, I, I don't uh, I don't uh, I don't see any uh, any way uh, to enhance uh, something uh, to enhance uh, uh, this, uh, this this matter. For the question of uh, the EU, uh, I uh, I don't understand what uh, about the question. Could you could you please uh, repeat the question? Yeah, the question was about the use of tier uh, one methods in, uh, to estimate emissions, like uh, default emission factors and so on. If you have any for the estimation of emissions? Do you have country specific emission factors or? Do you have any gaps uh, or any improvements that you can uh, think of prioritizing to, to move to a better estimation of emissions? Thank you. Uh, in Morocco, we, we have only one uh, emission factor regarding the production of electricity and uh, we are using uh, uh, IPCC uh, uh, guidelines for and is for to estimate the, the, the emissions but we uh, we, uh, uh, we 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 base on a methodology that gave, that gives the, the the nature of activities concerned and also an advanced analysis of all programs, politics, strategies of development, socio-economic development, uh, and to focalize on factors, pertinent or relevant factors, who who generate uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and then. We get uh, an approach and, uh, adopted uh, to determine the parameters, the required parameters, uh, by the, the the assessment models of uh, greenhouse gases. So, thank you, Morocco, for your presentation and also the information you shared with us. Now, let's move on to Republic of Moldova. I would like to invite the representatives from Republic of Moldova, Mr. Marius Tarano, National JG Inventory Team Leader, and Ion Commandant, Mitigation and MRV Team Leader, both in the Climate Change Office of the Ministry of Environment to deliver their presentations. Moldova, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, I have the honor to give with my colleague to present the outcomes of the first biennial update report, report of the Republic of Moldova, which has been submitted uh, in, um, together with two uh, technical annexes, uh, national inventory report and the summary report on GNG um, uh, inventory system. Uh, the presentation outline is the same as for other parties, so I will not stop uh, with some details on it and not commenting it. So, uh, part one of my presentation, it's dedicated, it's focused on summary of the annual update report and recent developments. So, I will start with national context. Uh, Republic of Moldova re regained its independence in uh, August 1991 after the breakdown uh, of the former Soviet Union. We are a very small country, Eastern European country, located between Romania and Ukraine, with a population around 4 million inhabitants. As per uh, GDP per capita, we are a low middle income country. Uh, the contribution to the global GNG emissions is less than 0.04% at the level of 2000, 2013 year. Also, Moldova is a very vulnerable country specifically to climate change and extreme meteorological events. As, as per national context, uh, the convention has been signed in 1992, the parliament ratifying it in 1995. Kyoto Protocol has been uh, ratified by the parliament in February 2003. 
we associated itself with Copenhagen Accord in January 2010. The Paris Agreement has been signed uh, in 2016, in September, and the Parliament uh, ratified already it quite recently in May, 4th of May 2017. So by this moment, we have submitted three national communications and a, and a, a biennial update report. Uh, we are the second only non annexon party in the world who submitted uh, a national inventory report in conjunction with uh, the national communication. And we did it for the first time in 2010. Right now, we are in the process of finalizing our fourth national communication, and we have started already the development of our second, national, uh, second biennial update report. As per institutional arrangements, uh, Minister of Environment of Republic of Moldova is in charge with the implementation of the convention at the national level. Uh, so in 2004, uh, it has been created a, a climate change office. Uh, it's a structure uh, created uh, within the Ministry of Environment. And um, the role of climate change office, it's also specified by the governmental decision number 141 as of uh, February 2014, sp uh, specifying uh, the specific role of climate change office. So since uh, it, ha it has been set up and until this moment, uh, the respective body is responsible for uh, preparation of GNG inventories, national communications, as well as of the annual update reports of the Republic of Moldova. Uh, in this slide, we presented very schematically uh, how the institutional arrangements works. Uh, within the Climate Change Office, there are three working groups, and also uh, the activity of Climate Change Office is supervising by a steering committee. The chair is the Minister of Environment, and uh, uh, seven relevant ministries are represented uh, in, uh, as members of this steering committee. And also, uh, a, a, a long range of institutions are involved as data providers, and uh, we are very grateful for receiving very qualitative uh, information and activity data, which is used to enhance our reporting under the convention. As per Gingy inventory profile, so uh, between 1990 to 2013, uh, the Gingy emissions decreased in the Republic of Moldova with around 70%. It's quite unusual for a non annexon party. Uh, so the emissions decreased from around 43 to around 13 megatons of CO2 equivalent. In this slide, you can see how the uh, trends of GNG inventory, uh, GNG emissions uh, uh, were between 1990 and 2013 in the Republic of Moldova and annex on parties. So you can see the same pattern. It's uh, very common to uh, Eastern European and Central European annex on parties. So, uh, um, for breakdown of GNG, uh, GNGs by gases, uh, you can see from this slide that uh, CO2 has the biggest share in the structure of national GNG uh, emissions, uh, followed by methane and uh, NTO. In the recent years, specifically since 1995 to the latest year, the share of F gases is uh, on permanent increase. However, they share in the total structure of GNG emissions, it's quite smaller. It's uh, around 1.1, 1 1.2%. So uh, the GNG emissions trends by sector, it's represented in this slide. You can see how the emissions evol uh, evolved during uh, th this period of time. The biggest uh, reductions being noted for energy uh, and agriculture sector. Uh, energy, uh, agriculture and waste sectors are the most relevant sectors, uh, um, so they have the biggest share in the structure of national GNG inventory. So the trends and associated variables. In order to have a better understanding uh, why this situation is happening in the Republic of Moldova, I have put in this, into this slide some, uh, some additional information on, on uh, some associated variables. So for instance, uh, consumption of primary energy resources decreased since 1990 with 78%, electricity consumption with 52%, heat consumption with 82%, and real GDP, it's quite, uh, strange as well for a non exon party from Eastern Europe, but uh, uh, we still had a decrease of 32% since 1990 to 2013. GNG intensity decreased by 60, uh, 56%, and the population number as well decreased by around 7%. Uh, 7%. Concomitantly, uh, since 2000 to 2013, the real GDP increased by around 90%. So 
this indicates that economy is developing in current uh, correct direction. However, uh, by 2013, uh, its level reached just 68% of the 1990 uh, year level. Further, uh, in this slide, we are presenting that this uh, um, increase in the variables is noted also for other uh, relevant variables. For instance, electricity consumption increased with around 21%, heat consumption by 10%, consumption of primary energy resources increased in the latest years with around 17%. And GNG intensity decreased by 37%, while the GNG emissions increased by around 19.6%. So this shows that uh, uh, the first signs of decoupling the economic growth from the growth of GNG emissions. A very positive sign for, for my country. And now I will pass the floor to my colleague, Mr. Commandant. <sighs> The Republic of Moldova reported in this uh, BUR information on mitigation actions and their effects. Uh, the uh, mitigation actions have been restructured by sectors, and each of sectors have uh, specific measures. I will mention some of them only. The main one, uh, in energy sector, energy efficiency, renewable energy sources, industrial, pro industrial process, decreases the amount of uh, clinker in the cement production in agriculture, uh, conservative agriculture, and the improving the structure of uh, livestock and poultry. In forestry, gradual increase of the forest lands. And in waste sector, develop, development of new regional uh, waste uh, landfill and waste transfer stations. Uh, 11 complex mitigation programs have been reported in tabular for format. Uh, here I presented uh, them, I will mention only some of them, uh, production of electricity and heat from renewable energy sources, heat production from biomass, uh, enhancing energy efficiency, uh, biofuel, biofuels used in transport sector, uh, improving uh, structure of uh, livestock and poultry, conservative agriculture, uh, extension of forested area, areas uh, improved solid waste management with biogas recovery. All of this program contains numbers and they need in order to be implemented to be developed properly. So uh, in the frame of uh, the low emission capacity building program launched in 2014 up to 2016, specific numbers have been selected and pr prioritized. In this respect, the experience um, uh, we, we gained experience in technology need assessment project and uh, uh, knowledge transfer obtained during this project permit uh, us to select from long list, long list of measures of 136 to four numbers for detailed examination. At the, at the last stage, stakeholders uh, participated in criteria scoring. Uh, here are presented uh, all these four numbers in, uh, developed in a detailed manner. Waste to energy uh, number, promotion of small CHP, promoting energy efficiency, lighting, afforestation of the uh, degraded land. Uh, all these numbers require around 350 million euro investments, and they cover up to 20% of conditional INDC. Here you can see uh, the results of implementation of mitigation measures. Uh, during the years 2006-2013, the energy intensity decreased by 4% per year. And uh, at uh, the right uh, figure, you can see a sharp development of uh, uh, renewable sources in the country. Uh, as to CDMA project, uh, there are 11 of them from, uh, from which uh, eight were registered by CDM uh, executive board. Uh, uh, what are the emission targets? The Republic of Moldova intends to achieve an e economy-wide unconditional target of reducing by 2030 its uh, GNG emissions by 64, 67% below its 19, 1990 level and conditional uh, target is 78%. Here uh, are shown uh, the GAG uh, gases ev uh, evolution during the year 19, 
1990 up to 2030. <clears throat> what are the progress? Uh, the government and parliament approve the law uh, of emission development strategy up to 2030, uh, published in uh, March of this year. The law on ratification of Paris Agreement, as Marius has already said, law on promoting the use of energy from renewable sources, uh, published in 2016, National Action Plan on Energy Efficiency, two of them, one the last is in process of implementation. As eight NAMAS uh, project design document are under the development in 2017. Subject of approval are regulations, regulation on measures to reduce emissions from air conditioning systems uh, in motor vehicles and taxis for helicopter burns. Uh, domestic MRV. Uh, the national MRV system currently under the development will be focused on three MRV categories. Uh, GNG emissions, unilateral NAMAS projects and mitigation actions, supported NAMAS projects. All NAMAS uh, categories uh, will be monitored using specific templates. By 2018, the following legislative acts are expected to be approved. Government decision on establishing an operation of the national system for monitoring and reporting GNG emissions and other information rele relevant to climate change. Government decision on establishing a mechanism for coordinating activities in the climate change area. Uh, then the new Environment Protection Agency to be established by 2020 is Plan B responsible further for the nation emergency system implementation. Obstacles and barriers. Uh, all of them are uh, extracted by sectors. I will mention some of them only. Uh, consumers re re reduce payment capacity. Second-hand vehicle used. Many energy efficiency projects in building are too small to attract investors. Legislative instability in fiscal and budgetary policy. Small budgetary allocation for agriculture. Excessive fragmentation of agricultural lands. Inadequate forest management, insufficient size of the surfaces covered uh, with forests, and then waste sector, insufficient financing of the waste manage, manage, management sector. Uh, what is the support received and needed? Up to, to uh, June 1st, 2015, uh, the donor commitments to the Republic of Moldova accounted for about 4.3 billion euro. Uh, with total disbursement of 2.4 uh, billion euro for a total of around 1,700 projects. Uh, uh, what's the financing is needed? For implementation of scenario with measures, we need 3.7 billion for the following 15 years and uh, around 4.9 billion for uh, uh, scenario with uh, additional measures. So, I will continue with uh, part two of our presentation, which is uh, focused on experience and lesson learned in participation in the ICA process. So, uh, participation in this process uh, raised the profile of climate change actions at the domestic level. It's for sure. How uh, it uh, take place and uh, some mo some more information about this. So uh, we started our biannual update report on 17th of July 2014, and usually it's a two-year cycle. In our case, we submitted our biannual update report by 5th of April 2016. So the technical anal analysis took place in September 2016, and uh, the report has been published already on 12th of February 2017. We have been very cooperative with the technical team of experts and the, the secretariat team. Uh, also, um, the first INDC, or uh, our INDC, has, has been submitted in September 2015, and uh, as you can see, uh, we have been uh, benefited a lot from this process because our targets, mitigation targets, has been fixed with the support of mitigation and MRV uh, team of experts. Uh, also, the low emission development strategy of the Republic of Moldova until 2030 has been approved already by the government uh, at the end of December 2016, uh, representing, in fact, the mechanism for achieving the assumed mitigation targets, which 
are noted or are uh, included in our INDC. And the Paris Agreement has been ratified by the Parliament uh, on May 2017. And uh, our office and the uh, Minister of Environment has been provided with full support and argumentation uh, in the Parliament commissions and in all governmental bodies. Uh, and for sure, uh, uh, we benefited a lot from this larger framework of ICA process in the Republic of Moldova. So uh, how... Uh, the biennial update report has been prepared and how we acted with the team of technical experts. So from this slide, you can see that the um, head of climate change office acted as the overall coordinator of the process and uh, as a focal point for ICA process as well. He or uh, the head of climate change office has been provided with some high level support in case it's deemed necessary uh, by the UNIFCC focal point, and two, uh, in fact, two uh, teams of experts has been activated, and uh, two coordinators has been assigned to uh, prepare the main chapters of the biennial update report. And as I uh, as I informed previously, uh, since 2010, the Republic of Moldova is preparing as well a national inventory report, it, which is a, a technical annex of biennial update report. Also, we have benefited a lot at, from the technical point of view from experienced reviewers our party is uh, has in uh, in the new fcc roster of experts and also national consultants and partner institution provided as well a very uh, important relevant technical support when it was deemed necessary so uh, for, uh, as for, as for preparing the ica process for the ica process so while providing climate-related information for the biennial update report preparation, uh, the following uh, processes um, uh, happened in my country. So during this process, we tried to optimize the procedures for gathering uh, and processing information necessary to compile to develop the GNG inventories, uh, biennial update reports, and national communications. Considering that this process, it should be a continuous improvement process and it's needed uh, for ensuring timeliness specifically timeliness and high quality of the reporting specifically after in the recent years uh, each non annexon party has to report in fact on biennial uh, basis so it's quite difficult and challenging for most of the parties in our case it, indeed it, wa it was quite challenging but we succeeded to do it even uh, in less less time as it was initially assigned while discussing this with our uh, GF implementation agency with UNEP, UN Environment. So uh, also we have prepared, we have su succeeded to prepare two governmental decisions. The first one, it's on establishing an operation uh, of the national system for monitoring and reporting GNG emissions and other information relevant to climate change. In fact, we, we successfully transposed the regulation 525 of European Union. Uh, accepting or uh, adapting it to the national circumstances of the Republic of Moldova, keeping in mind that we are a non annexon party at this moment, although we are in the process of uh, um, discussing with the European Union as a candidate uh, member, uh, member country, but uh, it's a little bit uh, more uh, time to think on this. But anyway, we, are, we have decided at this moment already to start uh, be prepared for a more challenging timeliness of reporting. Also, a second the governmental decision is on establishing the mechanism for coordinating activities in the climate change area. It's not only on mitigation, but uh, this governmental decision is covering also the adaptation uh, component as well. Also, as a result, we expect to enhance considerably the national arrangements more for, with more clear defining the roles, the responsibilities and deadlines, and uh, domestic coordination of climate change related activities. So, as for uh, addition value of uh, our cooperation with a uh, technical team of experts, so uh, within uh, the process, uh, we we ensured uh, for us, or the process itself ensured for us the opportunity to enhance the reporting as well as to better prioritize the country needs. The process also uh, used has been used to highlight the needs for national authorities in charge with various aspects related to climate change at national and local level. 
It's provided also the opportunity to highlight to the decision makers the relevance of enhancing uh, arrangements needed for ensuring a timely, transparent and complete reporting, for establishing an effective instrument to monitor the undertaking actions and assess the progress related to compliance with the adopted mitigation targets. Also, the process highlighted the importance of the institutional memory and that of maintaining the key technical expertise in the national institution involved in the reporting process. With this, I would like to thank you for attention and we are uh, welcome to, to raise any question. We'll be very glad to respond to all of them. Thank you. Thank you, Moldova. So I open the floor for questions. Switzerland, please. I'm very sorry, I have some problems seeing these flags here in New Zealand. Thank you. And uh, thank you to Moldova for that excellent presentation. Uh, first of all, we would really like to congratulate you on the publication of your first biennial update report. And in particular, for its very high quality, we note that the technical team of experts concluded that all of the elements of the modalities and guidelines were included in the BUR. Um, also, thank you for uh, the answer that you provided to our written question prior to the start of this session. We have a further question relating to the use of IPCC guidelines in your BUR. Are you able to tell us, is Moldova anticipating moving fully towards the 2006 IPCC guidelines for future BURs? And if so, is there anything you can tell us about uh, how you might be preparing to do so? Thank you. Germany, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to Moldova also for the very comprehensive presentation and outlining the developments already going on in terms of institutional arrangements and improvements um, that, that you are undertaking. Um, in the meantime, I, I would have uh, two questions in terms of priorities for the future, and um, one is related to the capacity building needs. Uh, you said also that the um, technical analysis has helped to, to raise the profile, but also to bring to the attention of other authorities in the country uh, the priorities in, in reporting. Um, and so my question will be, to what extent you think that the um, priorities for capacity building identified um, as part of the BUR, technical analysis, we are mirroring your own uh, national priorities and also whether you think which of them could be addressed in the short term, like for the next BUR. And related to this is my second question related to the greenhouse gas inventory, maybe also as a follow-up to the questions by the previous speaker, in, uh, to what extent, so what is your highest priority related to improving uh, the greenhouse gas inventory for the next BUR? Thank you. And Mexico, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Mexico would like to congratulate Moldova for uh, its BUR and also for this excellent and very comprehensive presentation. We've learned a lot about your efforts today and uh, during the, the process. Um, I would like to ask a question regarding your mention of the TNA process. And it would be interested uh, for us to learn more and hear your experience and lessons learned on how this a process of technology needs assessment has helped you prioritize your numbers. Thank you very much. Moldova, uh, the floor is yours to respond to these questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So I will start with uh, the first que question raised by New Zealand on use of IPC guidelines. So I have to share with you that uh, we are benefiting from very experienced uh, reviewers under the UNIFCC process. Our team of experts, of Jinji inventory experts, is very qualified. And uh, we are we involved in the process since 2001, as I am not mistaken. 
Katya can uh, confirm it. So uh, we are trying to do our best to improve the quality of our GNG inventory on permanent basis. So uh, uh, when the IPC 2006 IPC guidance has been published, immediately we have started already to think how to do it, how to use it in uh, in uh, in order to improve the quality of our GNG inventory. So already you can see from our biennial update report that, um, uh, for instance, the inventory for energy sector it's completely uh, done with the use or uh, with the use of 2006 IPC guidance. The same it's with um, uh, agriculture sector. In uh, IPC, in um, industrial processes, we used in the um, extent possible, but not for source, not for all categories. While for waste, uh, we used the good practice uh, guidelines. Uh, IPC good practice guidelines. And for LULUCF sector, we used also the good practice guidelines for LULUCF sector published in 2003. So uh, for the second biennial update report cycle, we already used in full extent the 2006 IPC guidelines. Already, uh, the, um, uh, and this fourth national communication, the inventory, which will be part of our fourth national communication to be published by the end of this year, it's already undertaken completely in accordance with the 2006 IPC guidelines. So uh, we are quite advanced on this level. Um, so on the question how we intend to move to 2006 IPC guidelines. So we already did it. In fact, we have already the results in accordance with these uh, new guidelines. With, uh, regarding the second question uh, of Germany, for, uh, for regarding the priorities for the future. So I will start with uh, our priorities in the area of GNG inventory and my colleague will also explain or provide some details about the mitigation and MRV component. So, uh, our priorities for the future, first of all, it's to um, improve the reporting, reporting and timeliness. For, for us, it's very important uh, because I, I informed already the audience previously that we um, uh, transposed the Regulation 525 of the European Union. And there are quite uh, tight deadlines for reporting. We are aware that for a non exome party, it's quite challenging. So, in order to be able to report time on, uh, on time, we have to put in place an institutional system which will work perfectly. So, our best or our high, highly prior, high priority is to approve the respective two um, governmental decisions which have been provided for the government for approval and consideration. Uh, we intend, first of all, to discuss with all governmental bodies and argue for them the necessary of uh, uh, approving the, the respective governmental decision in order to be able to have a system in place which will work perfectly in, accord, uh, in accordance with the new deadlines and in accordance with the new requirements, very tight requirements for time, uh, timeliness reporting. Also, uh, we are working on improving the transparency of reporting, trying to collect uh, and improve the statistical system. Unfortunately, we have an old statistical system, which uh, it's from former Soviet Union times. And uh, at this moment, we are trying to cooperate with all European countries, which are providing to us uh, very uh, relevant support. For instance, uh, Sweden, Norway as well, are providing very uh, considerable support to the National Bureau of Statistics, trying to improve the indicators, which will be collected and used by uh, GNG inventory team in order to be able to have a better reporting system. Also, we are trying to cooperate uh, in other aspects. For instance, we are trying to cooperate with UNEC, United Nations Economic Commission for Europe, uh, because uh, also we are trying to improve the statistical system, trying to cover as much as uh, uh, statistical indicators in this area. So in order to have a better cooperation, we have to think how the system should should work and uh, it's the highest priority of us in this area so uh, as per our experience our experience in cooperating with TTE and on identifying the capacity building needs so um, also it's very important I have to to 
commend uh, the Secretariat for inviting us, for keeping us in mind and inviting national experts uh, uh, to participate in this process. Participating in ICA process per whole, not only in the case as a host country, but also as expert, it's very beneficial. And uh, I will advise every non annexon party trying to involve as much expert as possible in this process because we are benefiting a lot from this process, trying and learning how to be uh, better prepared for 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 higher uh, reporting requirements so i have to say that the quality as you can see from the technical review uh, report uh, the quality of our uh, being update report is very high and uh, uh, in fact all mandatory issues uh, are in place so uh, capacity building needs has been identified and has been prioritized with the help of TTE but we are quite uh, well aware about the relevance of them and about the priority of them and we just try to better prioritize which of which are of high priority and which are of low priority but anyway all of them should be implemented uh, later or in the time. So uh, the capacity building, it's very relevant for us and we are very grateful for this process and for the opportunity to share with you the, the experience participating in this process. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> as to uh, capacity buildings, uh, uh, what are the priority for, for the country? As uh, I said, the country rely on NAMAS in order to uh, to reach uh, mitigation targets. It, as it is, it is now uh, NAMAS look like a, a business plan, which reflect in fact all the aspects needed to implement a measure. And we, uh, in frame of low emission capacity building project, uh, uh, have uh, received appropriate um, uh, have received appropriate <coughs> uh, 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 consulting uh, from the uh, international experts and which permitted to develop the in full manner for NAMAS and but they do not cover all the sectors that's why uh, we would appreciate to have uh, assistance to develop uh, uh, the same NAMAS for other sectors and which are not covered uh, this is building in, uh, industry and uh, agriculture uh, in the same time <coughs> Uh, uh, as to uh, uh, what are the capacity, uh, what are other needs in capacity building are to carry out climate studies, research assessments, formulate climate strategies and policies, implement climate strategies and uh, uh, policies, as I said, negotiate climate issues internationally, primarily to uh, attract financing. Uh, but uh, if if we would, would speak about uh, what are the priorities, as I said, first we would like to have this assistance to uh, to develop uh, NAMAS for other sectors. They could could, uh, uh, could um, serve as template for development of other measures in, in the appropriate uh, um, uh, sectors. Um, uh, and uh, uh, what more related to, to capacity building, uh, training stakeholders in implementing NAMAS uh, elaborated, including MRV uh, per NAMA, uh, uh, formulate and implement climate strategies and policies, as already said, uh, strengthening policies, uh, the legal framework as a management of forestry sector, uh, enhancing the national capacity to prepare viable project proposals, attracting financing such as uh, developing a project design document for uh, for NAMA in transport industry and agriculture sector, uh, uh, enhancing the capacity of the national network of research institutions, as, uh, uh, as uh, I already said. So, as to as to uh, question of Mexico, ten uh, experience. Then the experience, um, in fact, the experience, this project uh, lasts for three years and help us very much to identify the priority sectors, first of all, and then from each of these priority sectors to identify the measures that, uh, that merit to be uh, analyzed and prioritized. Uh, what was important in frame of this uh, project uh, uh, we uh, were taught how to use uh, 
multi-criteria decision analysis. And uh, when we start to the, the second uh, project, low emission capacity building uh, project, uh, we, as I said, selected 136 uh, projects, uh, most of them from technology need assessment project. And uh, as a final stage, uh, we, uh, we uh, uh, understood that without, without applying multi-criteria decision analysis, the approach would be too, too sub, 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 subjective, subjective, subjective uh, and, and that's why uh, this instrument helped us very much to identify the best uh, uh, numbers for detailed examination. Thank you. So thank you, Moldova, for your presentation also, and also for the information you provided to the audience. Thank you. Now, colleagues, let's move on to Thailand. I would like to invite the representative from Republic of Thailand, Dr. Pirun Saitupanich, Director of Climate Change Management and Coordination Division, to deliver his presentation. Thank you. The floor. Thailand, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, my dear colleagues. It's my privilege to be here to present to you Thailand first BUR. Thailand has submitted our first BUR in December 2015. The greenhouse gas emission calculation is based on revised 1996 IPCC guideline, good practice guidance, and some emission factors were obtained from 2006 IPCC guideline. So I'm gonna skip the outline. Uh, looking at the national circumstances, uh, Thailand is located at the heart of the mainland Southeast Asia. The land area is approximately 514,000 uh, square kilometers, comprising of hills, mountains, plains, uh, especially the uh, 2,615 kilometers of coastline uh, along the Gulf of Thailand and the Andaman Sea. Land use is classified as 32% forest, 46% agriculture of which 47% is dedicated to rice cultivation. Our population is reaching 66 million uh, people with the gender ratio of 0 0.96 uh, male to female. Uh, the majority of the uh, population is living in the uh, rural areas, 55.8%, uh, but the, uh, the uh, percentage is being decreased because people are uh, tending to move to reside in the uh, municipal area more and more. In 2015, World Bank has classified us as the upper middle, middle income economies, and there our transportation, uh, transportation is still 87.5% uh, road based. Natural gas consumption is around 46%, which is contributing to uh, energy uh, production and also the transport, transportation fuels. Let's take a look at the institutional arrangement for a greenhouse gas inventory because the, the Thai government has put climate change as one of the national priorities. So we have been able to establish the uh, permanent structure of institutions to uh, work on the greenhouse gas inventory. We have designated five leading agencies to collect activity data from, from uh, 59 uh, lie agencies uh, with the technical supports from Thailand greenhouse gas uh, management organizations uh, on the quality control. Office of Natural Resources and Environmental Policy and Planning under the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment as a national focal point. Uh, we compile activity data, recheck them, and do the uh, preliminary calculation of the greenhouse gas emissions before we submit the result to the uh, greenhouse gas emission inventory working groups uh, for a review and uh, revision if needed. And then the, we have uh, set up the technical and greenhouse gas database subcommittee which is chaired by the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Natural Resource Environment for the uh, quality assurance. And then final uh, approval is, will be done by the National Committee on Climate Change Policy which is chaired by the uh, Prime Minister, and they are comprising of uh, uh, 15 uh, permanent secretaries from uh, different ministries and five national experts. 
here, uh, even though the first BUR and the coming uh, second BUR Thailand is still using 1996 uh, IPCC guidelines, but we are uh, taking uh, uh, a big step to move to I, uh, 2006 IPCC guideline with the great support from the Austrian government in the development of the Thailand Greenhouse Gas Emission Inventory System or TGIS, which is or I can say it's twin of the edges, but we tailor the system to fit with our na uh, national activity data collection system and to fit with our inst institutional arrangements. Uh, here to you, uh, just the, some key features with TGIS, it will be able to, uh, to do, to perform the carbon check for the energy sector to produce uh, different formats reports according to the UNFCCC requirement it can calculate the time series of emissions and also the equation on the uncertainty calculation is embedded into the system. Oops. Okay, here is the total greenhouse gas emissions, including the CF. Uh, in 2011, uh, Thailand emitted around 3 uh, 305 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent of which energy sector contributes uh, the most emissions of around uh, to 73%, followed by agriculture around 17%, uh, industrial process of 6%, and the last, which is waste, around 4%. Luzu CF is still considered as the removal sector of around 70 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. The trend of greenhouse gas emissions from the period of 2000 to 2006 it uh, was increasingly, it was uh, steadily, st steadily increasing. Uh, but when, t when we take a look at the uh, emission trend from 2006 to 2011, it's uh, uh, become more sort of stable. Uh, looking at the, uh, the growth rate of the emission on the energy and industry sectors, uh, uh, throughout this period were around 3.3% uh, and 2.7% respectively compared to the uh, uh, real GDP of uh, growth rate of 4.1% uh, during the time, the same time period. For the uh, mitigation action aspects, uh, Thailand has the integrated climate change into our 20 year national strategies we have also put our NAMAR emission reduction target into our national social and economic development plan, the five-year terms. The uh, we also formulated the National Climate Change Master Plan, which is approved by the cabinet in July 2015. And now the plan is being implemented with the great support from BMDB and GIS uh, to integrate the climate change into the uh, provincial and local uh, development plans. The mitigation target by 2020, we aim to reduce 7 to 20% compared to the best as usual uh, scenario in, 20, uh, in 2020 and uh, to increase the uh, share of the renew, uh, to increase the uh, renewable energy consumption by 25%. And uh, in 2030, we aim to reduce 25% energy intensity from the base year of 2005. And at the same year, the Ministry of Energy has revised uh, their alternative energy uh, development and the energy efficiency plans. And uh, the, the, the target under these this plans are 30% renewable energy share on the final energy consumptions in 2036 and to reduce 30% energy intensity from base year of 2010. And of course, these plans are a solid basis for Thailand NDC uh, emission reduction target development of 20% 20 in 2030 uh, compared to the BAU. Here is the, uh, the tracking of the uh, NAMA pledge, 7%. In 2020, uh, we track, we have established the MRV framework and uh, we come up with the uh, five mitigation measures, which are electricity generation from renewable energy sources, ethanol production, biodiesel production, and the improving efficiency of specific energy consumptions on existing power plants. Uh, 
after we tracked the result, it showed uh, in 2013, we were able to reduce 4% or around 14.34 million ton of carbon dioxide equivalent compared to the VAU. Here is the Thailand's MRV system that we officially established. Uh, on the ministerial level, there is the technical sub-working group at the, uh, to determine an in, uh, evaluation criteria for the greenhouse gas emission reduction, uh, namely MRV process and structure, appropriate methodology, which is uh, uh, developed uh, based on the CDM methodology, but has been adjusted to fit with our uh, requirement and criteria. And then the, uh, the result will be uh, sent to the climate change coordination working group under the ministerial level. Uh, for uh, preliminary approval before it's sent to the NAMAR and NMRV sub-national committee, uh, which is uh, chaired by the permanent secretary for endorsement uh, uh, for the verification of the greenhouse gas emission reduction. And the final uh, justify will be on the National Committee on Climate Change Policy, which is chaired by the uh, uh, Prime Minister, before we can uh, include our uh, emission reduction into our BUR. The obstacles and barriers we have experienced during the uh, working on our uh, uh, BUR preparation and green, uh, greenhouse gas calculations is uh, no mandate is provided by climate change law because in Thailand under uh, current uh, circumstances we don't have a climate change act yet we utilize our uh, 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 power through the uh, uh, soft law like cabinet resolution or uh, royal decree uh, issued by the uh, office of prime minister. So in order to uh, provide mandate for a lie agency to collect activity data from, for example, private sectors, uh, still, you know, difficult. And we don't have uh, yet in place the data management system for archiving our uh, data for inventory calculation, even though we are still, we are working on it uh, for the teachers with the Australian government. And the difficulty in transi uh, transition of estimating the greenhouse gas inventory because the lack of the research support to move up from tier one to tier twos. Here are some of the support needs on the energy supply. We think that smart grid is very crucial to enhance the renewable energy production and consumption. The, high, uh, the advanced technology and waste to energy is uh, very uh, is sub sub substantially important for Thailand right now because we are trying to move forward in, in this uh, uh, sector. And advanced biofuels, uh, production from non-food feedstock is uh, one of the uh, key technologies we would like to see. Uh, and also on the agricultural sector, we would like to increase our capability in forecasting and early warning uh, system uh, setting up in order to reduce the risk from climate change impacts. Uh, the management, uh, high efficiency management of infrastructure to uh, efficiently manage water resource is one of the uh, area that we uh, would like to have more capacity and also the uh, technologies transfer. Modeling uh, on the uh, uh, prediction of the uh, climate weather, uh, some of the keys have been raised by the uh, country expert. Here's just to uh, show you the support received so far in the, the BUR1 in 2011. We have received uh, support from Jeff, EU, BMUB through the International Climate Initiative, and of course, from the government of Australia to help us to build the uh, TGIS to step up from 1996 to the 2006 IPCC guidelines. The ratio of the adaptation budgets to the mitigation budgets is around uh, 68% to 32%. Uh, 
through the participation in the IECA process, of course, uh, this process has raised awareness of our uh, decision maker on the, the uh, transparency issues of what to be reported in the BUR. So we have established the national structure of reporting system that engage lie agencies to support the activity data. And of course, comments receiving from TTE uh, has identified gaps uh, of the data uh, uh, to be input into the BUR, which uh, lead to the, uh, the need for the improvement of, of our uh, institutional arrangement for the activity data collection. And also, the, uh, the comments also lead to the uh, capacity building need for our for our national experts to uh, prepare necessary data uh, to be in the our next BUR for uh, increasing of the uh, transparency and clarity. Oops. Okay. So not respond to the questions because I still have time left. So I'll go quickly to you know the questions received from the USA. Uh, Lulu CF Singh drawing between 2004 and 2005 because we have added rubber plantations to our greenhouse gas emission estimation uh, under subcategory changes in forest and woody biomass stocks. But before that, we don't have the data, so we don't uh, calculate them. From Switzerland, the uh, uh, the absence, the unavailability of the uh, fuel consumption data for the international aviation and water transport in 2012 and 2000, 2013. Uh, this is because uh, during the time period, the uh, organization responsible for reporting these data were under the restructuring, so the data are missing. But we are we were able to calculate the the uh, greenhouse gas emissions for this. Uh, 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 sub, sub, uh, sectors by using the uh, the energy data in the uh, the uh, excuse me the uh, energy situation uh, 2013 provided by the Ministry of Energy. So from New Zealand, the uh, uh, uncertainty assessment in the next BUR, of course, Thailand is going to put the uncertainty assessment into our second BUR, which is supposed to be uh, submitted at the end of this year. But of course, we still need a support on these uh, issues uh, for us to be able to calculate the uh, uncertainty, to reduce the level of uncertainty in the Lulu CF and agriculture uh, sectors. And also the uncertainty calculation will be embedded into the TGS as I have mentioned before. From EU, the assumption and methodolo methodologies used for the uh, Lulu CF sector, the methodologies that we used is based on revised 1996 IPCC guidelines and decision tree in the 2003 good practice guidance for LUCF for a subcategory 5A, 5B, 5C, and the tier two emission factors uh, uh, was uh, were obtained from the pub published data and expert judgments. But in the end, the activity data and the emission factor were verified by the LUCF greenhouse gas inventory working group established under the National Committee on Climate Change Policy. For in the EU, again, the information uh, of the application of tier two methodologies for Lulu CF sector, the forest area used in the calculations uh, was from remote sensing data reported by the Royal Forestry Department, uh, the area of Planted forests were reported by responsible organizations, for example, the, uh, the Office of Agricultural Economics and the Forestry Industrial Organization. For uh, the uh, improvement of the estimates in the UCF sector for the upcoming 
GHG inventory. Of course, more research work has been carried out in the countries uh, these days, especially on the above ground biomass and carbon contents from natural forests and plantations. So we are expecting to see more uh, country-specific emission factor. And at the same time, uh, we are in the process of developing the activity data template, which we standardized uh, to collect uh, uh, activity data according to the IPCC 2006 guidelines. Uh, and hopefully it will be done at the end of this year. From the EU again, the uh, experience on use, of using the IPCC 2006 guidelines, of course, uh, we have less experience on the uh, 2006 IPCC guideline, but with the great support from the Austrian government on the TGIS, we will be able to, uh, we are expecting to be uh, using uh, the, IP, the 2006 IPCC guideline for our third BUR if uh, on the assumption that our activity data uh, collection system also has completely established and our licensee has uh, a capability to collect such data. This is from EU uh, priority needs in the short term. Of course, we would like to improve our reporting emissions on marine and av aviation bunkers because we would like to reduce the gap that we found when we calculate the ref we cal cal calculate emissions using the reference approach compared to the sectoral approach. And we would like to uh, improve our data collection system to shift from 1996 to 2006 IPCC guidelines. And the enhancement of the national capacity to develop assumptions for all mitigation actions crucial because this will be uh, beneficial for us for the more ambitious NDC targets in the future. Uh, from the EU, uh, key success factors for our data collection and the greenhouse gas inventory improvement. Uh, the most important key success factor is the support from the policy makers. Uh, is the, you know, our prime minister has emphasized about climate change and as I said, has put climate change one of, one of the uh, national pol uh, priorities. So we, you know, uh, have been able to designate uh, five leading agency to work together uh, closely with the national focal point to uh, uh, collect the activity data. And at the same time, uh, we have also uh, provide uh, uh, capacity building for our light agency as well for, for them to better understand about climate change and understand about the uh, activity data that you know needed to be collect to comply with the uh, UNF to receive requirement. EU uh, the process to enable higher tier methodologies for key agriculture subsectors uh, of course, because Thailand is one of the leading countries for uh, agricultural production, so we have uh, quite a number of uh, research being done by government agencies and universities to come up with country-specific emission factor. And the, uh, for the uh, national uh, uh, level, so we have been able to uh, calculate uh, emissions in the agricultural sector uh, using the tier two for uh, many subsectors. And as I mentioned before, uh, whatever we selected, activity data and emission factor has to be approved uh, by the working group on the uh, greenhouse gas uh, inventory. The EU, last two questions, uh, the remaining challenges of moving to higher tier methodologies in agricultural sector. Uh, we would like, would like to increase our uh, 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 lie agency understanding on the manu manure management systems. So for, for that, they can you know, uh, collect activity data that is in, uh, 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 according to the IPCC guideline and the limitation of equipment and analytical instruments uh, also 
on the methane conversion factors or emission factor from each uh, uh, manure management system. And the uh, aiming to higher IPC methodologies, capacity building is required on uh, the technical training of the agricultural modeling, growth model, and uh, denitification and decomposition model, uh, which is developed by the US. And uh, okay. Last from the EU is the is the BUR guideline uh, provide a, a sufficiently clear uh, for us to follow. Um, at that time that we prepare our first BUR, we think that the domestic MRV uh, is not clear of what to be reported under the BUR, including the finance uh, as well as the finance, technology, and the capacity building needs and supports. And uh, one of the aspects is that we see the overlapping of the NC in some topics, uh, such as natural circumstance, inventory, and mitigation. So uh, it's, uh, it's a workload that we have to do uh, the report, uh, the NC and the BUR at the same time. So to avoid the confusion of the national consultation on the inventory and natural circumstances, we have to come up with our uh, strategic uh, approach to avoid such a, you know, uh, uh, time and uh, money investment on that consultation process of the same information. And of what overall being said, thank you for your attention and we will be uh, gladly to receive more questions from the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Thailand, for your presentation. Now, please let me open the floor for questions. Korea, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for comprehensive presentation. Uh, according to the Thailand National Climate Change Master Plan, Thailand mentioned that GH emissions from energy and transport sectors would be reduced by 7 to 20% in 2020, depending on the level of international support. So what do would be the GH reduction in the energy sector contributed by Thailand effort alone to meet the reduction target in 2020? Second question is what is the top priority for the international support in the energy sector to reduce the GH emissions? Thank you. Thank you. Japan, please. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and thank you very much, Thailand, for your very informative presentation. It was quite helpful to understand your um, activities. Um, I have a question about your MLV system, um, following, maybe following up the uh, question raised by EU in the written questions process. Uh, you need to regularly prepare BUR. We believe that you had to enhance the continuity or sustainability of the MLB system, including GHG inventory or mitigation actions. So you have any particular lesson learned or good practice which contributed to the enhancement of these uh, sustainability or continuous continuity? Could you share with us? Thank you very much. And the EU, please. Thank you, Chair. And congratulations to Thailand for the first uh, BUR. It was really uh, a very good presentation and uh, thank you very much for the written answers as well. You have a, an impressive delegation also with you here. Uh, I have, I think you have explained everything, but I would just like to confirm with you uh, our understanding of your inventory priorities. So in relation to your BUR too, actually, uh, is the move to the 2006 IPCC guidelines uh, supported by the government of Australia, as you explained, uh, moving to higher tier methods, improving activity data collection uh, among your key, key priorities for, uh, for greenhouse gas inventories? That's my first question. Uh, I have a, a clarification also asking uh, from your presentation whether you were, I understood maybe, uh, let me put the question. Are you planning to replace gasoline and diesel with ethanol and biodiesel in the transport sector? Thank you. And let me also give floor to the representative of India for the question. Then we will go for another round. Thank you. India, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. India congratulates Thailand for a crisp and concise presentation of information in BUR1. 
Your national greenhouse gas inventory suggests that energy sector contributes to over 70% of national emissions, and there are mitigation measures being planned and implemented. Summary of support needs have been indicated in your presentation. However, we would like to understand if any quantification is available in terms of level of support needed. What constraints were faced in quantification of support need? Thank you. Thank you. So Thailand, we will, I will appreciate your brief answers on these questions. Thank you. Okay, uh, to respond to the Korean uh, question, under the CCMP, we set target for emission reduction in 2020, 7 to 20%, 7% 7 will be uh, uh, based on our domestic effort. And from upper, you know, more than 7% to 20% depends on the, uh, uh, the support received on the financial and technological, technological transfer and capacity, bu capacity building. MRV, okay, because uh, for the MRV, uh, I think it's the same as the uh, other developing countries where national focal point of the UNFRC, who is in charge of the greenhouse gas inventory uh, uh, calculations, actually it's not the ministry that, you know, uh, do the mitigation actions. So what we do, our strategy is to, we communicate constantly and work collaboratively with our light agency. We form many uh, working groups under the mandate of the National Committee on Climate Change Policy. Uh, we work together to identify uh, the MRV uh, potential measures. And uh, we also establish the MRV frameworks together. And before we uh, uh, send the framework uh, to get the approval from the cabinet, we make sure that all ministries agree with this uh, developed framework. For the EU, uh, let me respond to the uh, the uh, the use of the biofuel and and and, and gas haul in the transportation uh, sectors. Yes, of course. We actually we are using them right now, and we are able to track the results. Uh, we uh, up to 2011, uh, around, well, I couldn't find them right now, but it's around 2 point, uh, uh, million liters of uh, gas or haul and and some millions of uh, biodiesel that are being, you know, uh, uh, utilized uh, in the country, and the number uh, continue to grow. And according to uh, the target set under the uh, AEDP and the EEP issued by the Ministry of Energy, we aim to uh, to, uh, to see the the final uh, replacement of the uh, fossil fuel with uh, more of the uh, gas to haul and the uh, biodiesel. For India, support needs for energy efficiency. Uh, of course, uh, uh, thank you. So, yes, uh, as the uh, for the uh, uh, energy efficiency uh, that we need. Well, it's uh, because we uh, un under our NDC emission target uh, reduction reduction target in 2030, energy efficiency in the uh, industrial sectors are uh, one of the uh, priority measures. But still, we are in the process of uh, developing our uh, domestic MRV on this issue because, as known by everyone, that uh, energy efficiency is quite uh, difficult uh, on the MRV system. Constraint. 
and to respond to the EU questions that uh, about the TGS, that TGS will also uh, incorporate the uh, calculation of the biofuel and uh, gasoline emission. Yes, and we are in the process of working with the Australian experts. Yeah. So thank you. Now, China, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Talan, for a comprehensive presentation. Uh, you have just mentioned the 2020 and 2030 targets in your presentation. Can you share more information on the challenges Thailand is facing in achieving these goals and your consideration to address all these matters? Thank you. Yes, for the uh, 2020 targets, we have established the, what we call the NAMA roadmap where we identify you know, measures to be done uh, uh, each year until 2020. Uh, uh, in, in 2013, we were able to uh, MRV five, uh, four uh, mitigation reduction measures, but in, 2000, uh, uh, in 2016, we will be able to increase uh, two more mitigation reduction measures. And uh, for the 2030 uh, emission reduction, reduction target under NDC, we have finalized our NDC roadmap that identify emission reduction targets for 15 potential uh, mitigation measures. And the, uh, uh, the roadmap is uh, being tabled to the cabinet for approval before the cabinet uh, gives the uh, uh, mandate to light agency to do the action plans according to the emission reduction target allocated. Oh, one more thing that uh, the the, uh, the the emission reduction target in 2020 is based on just energy and transportation sectors. But for the NDC, we uh, extend the uh, sector to cover uh, waste and the IPPU as well. And we are uh, working with uh, other uh, our light agency domestically to uh, identify the baseline for the emission uh, reduction in the uh, uh, agricultural sectors but of course that uh, uh, our aim is to you know uh, uh, increase the production yield and reduce the energy consumption or uh, in other words it's uh, we we looking into uh, an adaptation core benefits on this sector thank you Thailand also for your answer but now we will have two more uh, parties asking for floor Brazil and Saudi Arabia uh, the floor is open for you, Brezza. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank the distinguished representative um, of Thailand for his clear presentation. Um, one of the main targets of Thailand's climate change master plan 2015-2020 is the increase of renewables, such as the use of ethanol. I understand you advanced the, the European Union, but I wanted you to, if you could share with us the experience of Thailand with the use of ethanol in the transport sector. Thank you. Now, Saudi Arabia, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. I think it's a bit awkward being the last question for the last session, I guess, on this. Um, just one question to Thailand. You mentioned, I think, one of the challenges that you faced during your biannual reports is the aggregation of the maritime sector. Um, I, uh, if you could kindly clarify what you meant, do you want the maritime sector to be part of your NDC or plans or biannual report? Or is it, uh, my understanding is that it's under um, a different sector like the IMO, International Maritime Organization. Do you want to include it in here? If you could just clarify in that because I didn't get it. Thank you very much. Sure, uh, we we will not include the, uh, those emissions into our BUR, but according to the uh, TTE comments, uh, we have to do the uh, reference reference approach and the sectoral approach, and we found that there's still a gap between these two approaches, and we think that we have to come up with the better management of data collection on the international aviation and maritime transport. 
to be able to reduce such gap. Okay, uh, we for the 2030, uh, uh, for the 2030, uh, the target for the uh, biofuel and the ethanol uh, usage is uh, 9 million liters per day, and now we have achieved. Uh, 3 million liter per day for biodiesel and 3 million liter per day for ethanol utilization. So thank you, Thailand. And now uh, let's move on to Uruguay for the final presentation of the session. I would like to invite the representatives from Uruguay, Mr. Ignacio Lorenzo, Ms. Mariana Kaspars, Ms. Paula Visca and Mr. Walter Ohan Chabal to deliver their presentation. Uruguay, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Rapporteur. Uh, we will read a very short introductory statement and then we'll proceed to deliver uh, our presentation on the screen. Uruguay welcomes this SBI session on the facilitative sharing of views within the international consultation analysis of the biennial update report. Uruguay is very pleased to participate in this session under the principle of non-intrusive, non-punitive, and in respect of national sovereignty. By participating in this session, we seek to be transparent in our GAG inventory as well as towards our policies and measures that relate to mitigation at a national context. Uruguay believes transparency allows us to better understand each other, to better interact in good faith, to share lessons as well as barriers, and to seek for support for de from developed country parties to developing countries for us to increase our capacity in relation to climate change policies and actions and MRB. Uruguay has just ended drafting uh, their national climate, uh, climate change policy, where we have included very specific provisions in relation to MRB that we are confident will increase transparency as well as efficiency in terms of policy making and delivery. We are proud to attend our first FSB session and also that we have presented our first biannual update report last year which was indeed a very useful outcome in both global and national levels, and that is a result of great efforts from our country as a whole, with the participation of many ministries and professionals, especially Ministry of Housing, Land Planning and Environment, Ministry of Livestock, Agriculture and Fisheries, and the Ministry of Industry, Energy and Mining. We are very thankful to them for their assistance to the work that we will present. Our presentation will uh, engage on three parts. Part one will be a summary of our BUR and recent developments. Of course, we will um, have a very brief uh, uh, interaction on our national context, then our, our GAG inventory, our main mitigation actions and policies, the support needed and received. Later, we will uh, address the issue of lessons learned in the ICA process. And last, we will also engage on the questions that we have received uh, on the platform that we also have um, shared answers by email uh, earlier this morning. As for our national context um, uh, regarding institutional arrangements, uh, Uruguay has its, in its Ministry of Housing, uh, Land Planning and Environment uh, the focal point for uh, the UNFCCC and its implementation. We have also ratified, of course, the Convention and the Kyoto Protocol, and we have developed in 2009 the National Climate Change Response System, which is uh, uh, an institutional arrangement which includes almost all ministries, the subnational governments, and also as a framework we also engage with civil society, the private sector and academia. We also have ratified, of course, Paris Agreement last year, and we have, uh, during the last year and, and this one, uh, having further uh, um, engaged on our institutional arrangements, and we have created the National Environment, Water and Climate Change Secretariat at presidential level, and also a National Environment System and a National Environment Cabinet that has just started their work. Also, for the relevant facts of Uruguay, uh, our economy is based in agro-industrial chains and tourism, of course, that will also be uh, related to our emission uh, uh, profile. We are also, of course, a very vulnerable country to climate change in terms of both of our um, relations to agriculture and the way we produce uh, uh, food and also to our coastal areas. We have also developed a very clean energy electric matrix with 95% of electricity and 55% of our global primary mix uh, coming from renewable energy. 
And from 2003 to 2014, our economy had grown up uh, on a 4.7% annual average. This is the highest and the long lasting uh, growth that Uruguay has in all its history. And having also reduced poverty from 40% to 9%. This is the context that we are presenting our, our, our inventory and our BUR results. This is the summary of, of uh, our inventory uh, in terms of um, gas mass in each in each of their own mass. There's no CO2 equivalent here. As you can see, um, well, the, the data is too small, but uh, in large terms, uh, we do have a very important um, profile in our agriculture sector. And also our Lulu CF sector is a net uh, remover of CO2 emissions. In this next slide, you can see in right now in CO2 equivalent for both GWP and GTP metrics, how is the profile of our, of our inventory in terms of sector. As you can see, agriculture is our first uh, sectors in terms of emission. This is uh, quite unusual in the, in the profiles of emissions worldwide. Uh, so we indeed have a very specific approach to the issue of agriculture, especially the, the issue of livestock. And then we have energy and waste and last industrial processes. This is the evolution between 1990 and 2010. Um, actually, we are um, very happy that we are able to present this slide. We understand that, that having achieved um, so many inventories through the years and also with the support uh, of the work uh, done under the BUR, uh, that allows us to have a very uh, important uh, historical um, evolution of, of emissions that is also very useful for us in terms of uh, planning and policy making uh, on issues regarding mitigation as well. As you can see, um, the, the, here the, the, the table also express uh, the emissions evolution in both metrics, GWP and GTP. Um, it starts in 1990. We, we do not have inventory for 1992 as well as for 1996. But then after 98, we have it every two years. Uh, as you can also see, our Lulu CF um, uh, is, it has a, a lot of remotions in, in our CO2 in Uruguay. There are some, some years that uh, the, there has been um, very important CO2 remotions in terms of our CO2 emissions, even surpassing that, that remotion. And um, we, are, we are seeing also that our emissions are somehow related to our economic uh, um, um, uh, development. If you can see in the middle 2000, 2000 2002, 2004, we see there uh, a, a low in our, in our emission that also relates to um, our economic uh, crisis in those years. Um, Also in this issue of uh, economy, as some colleagues, uh, countries previous said, that there is a very interesting relation between both uh, economy and, and emissions. And, and we also are trying to work on that for future planning, also in terms of our NDC, trying to address the issue of emission from an intensity uh, aspect. In relation to mitigation policies and action, and this is something that we have uh, discussed a lot in Uruguay when presenting our, our first BUR, is that indeed uh, the guidelines um, relate to very specific uh, actions and so how to be they are measured however we we saw that uh, for the case in Uruguay we have these very uh, three very large very important uh, specific policies the first is the energy policy that was developed in 2008 with a view of 2030 also our smart agriculture policy of 2010 and our, our old uh, forestry framework that was developed in the 1980s those three policies have huge impact in terms of our emissions profile. Our energy policy, for example, has reached in 2016, as we said, 96% of renewable energy in our electric uh, matrix, being that 22%. However, uh, since this BUR relates to the 2010 uh, GAG inventory, there we only have 38 megawatts uh, of wind energy in 2010. Currently, we're at 1,211 megawatts. So in a way, what we're seeing is that this, uh, the effect of these policies will be better perceived in our inventories in the, during the next years. 
Also regarding our smart agriculture policy, we, we see the, the issue of agriculture, as, as you saw in our profile, as a very strategic one in terms of, of mitigation action. And the, our reasoning behind this is that uh, we need to deliver and not to affect uh, food production, but however, try to reduce the intensity of emissions in, in per kilogram or per unit of, of especially beef production. And we are also uh, having this view to reduce by 33% our intensity in terms of methane for 2030, as was from 1990. Regarding forestry, we have seen uh, very important developments of forestry in, in Uruguay from the 1980s to, to the present, especially in the de decade of 1990, as you saw in, in our, our um, and initially in the first half of, two, of the decade of 2000, as you saw in our inventory, where we have expanded almost in 7, 700,000 hectares uh, uh, plantations um, uh, all across Uruguay. So in a way, this is also has a huge impact on our, on our emissions as well. In our BUR, we also included uh, the seven NAMAs we have presented to the UNFCCC registry. And we also are very interesting. Some of those relate specifically to issues of energy and also to agriculture and forestry. And also regarding our domestic MRB, uh, we of course have presented our national greenhouse gas inventory, but we also um, want to relate this, our inventory, with also major statistics, a major uh, framework we have for, for also and uh, taking into account policy making measures. Specifically, two of those sources are the agriculture statistics that are the last uh, 12 to 13 years that are all online. You can uh, address those. They are very detailed and they're actually very useful in terms of um, the basic data for, for our inventory. And also the national energy balance that is one of the long lasting uh, energy balances in Latin America. From uh, we, uh, Last year we accomplished our 15th anniversary of this uh, energy balance that actually is also very useful in terms of uh, input for our emissions in the energy sector. In relation to support needed, uh, what we have presented is this um, table that uh, relates uh, all of the um, uh, mitigation actions that we have included in our INDC. And we have uh, this qualitative analysis, whether those uh, needed support in terms of capacity, in terms of finance, or in terms of technology. And we relate those actions with this area of support. And we have... Um, uh, However, we, we have bring this forward, but we also look to have this much more in detail in the next BURs, specifically in our first NDC as well. Regarding support received, uh, we have, of course, uh, included the financial support to comply with the commitments under the UFCCC, specifically the NATCOMs, the BUR, and TNA. We have also um, uh, received a very specific uh, training materials from CGE and workshops on the GEG inventories, mitigations, and BUR that we understand that were, were very useful for us in developing our BUR and also our, our national transparency framework. We also have um, some, uh, we call it leveraging policies that somehow actually strengthening, for example, in our institutional arrangements may also allow us to achieve more in terms of specific measures uh, and mitigations. And we also have uh, are receiving uh, some financial support to overcome some specific barriers and financing pilots, especially from GEF. And, and now we also presenting the, the capacity building initiative for transparency project as well. Some of the lessons learned we have uh, achieved during the ICA process. First is the strengthening of our national uh, inventory working group, that is within the National Climate Change Response System. Um, this, work, this working group um, assisted the developments from already uh, from 2010, the development of the inventory. Uh, however, during the ICA process, we have the opportunity to receive feedback, very specific feedback on our work. And this um, this had allows for for the, these working groups to strengths to uh, have deeper research, deeper understanding of their work, 
and uh, we have seen this as very useful. We also, um, having received some of this specific feedback, we have also already improved our 2012 inventory that was presented last year uh, in our um, uh, fourth national communication. And we have also um, find some very specific inputs for our second BUR project proposal that is already underway and very specific inputs for the elaboration of our project on their capacity building initiative for transparency. Being Uruguay, one of the few very first countries that have this, this CBIT approved uh, and is currently on their project elaboration. We also um, very much appreciate the, the, the issue that the TTE spoke Spanish and we can relate in Spanish with those experts and also in relation to our working group. And also, of course, the support from the Secretary on the ICA process that we understood was essential in order to keep uh, the pace of the work and also to achieve very concrete uh, output in this, in this way as well. Well, addressing some of the key questions that were presented to us, um, we received five questions from the EU and one question from New Zealand that was um, presented uh, uh, by the platform. We, as we say, we have uh, um, uh, um, give the answers and they were uh, um, sent by email uh, earlier today. And we also looking forward for those to be at the platform as well. Uh, we um, like uh, make uh, some four big uh, clusters of these questions. The one is, relates to constraint gaps and improvements in the LULUCF section of our inventory. Also the combination of 1996 and 2006 IPCC guidelines. Also the issue of high tier and key categories. And last, which is a much more broad question that this is also related to several questions that we have received uh, a much broader approach is the institutional arrangements and MRV system. In these regards, I would like to uh, address uh, this first cluster of questions uh, that we as a general issue see that one of the main constraints and gaps are related, of course, to availability and heterogeneity of the qual and quality of the national data to, to elaborate the GAG inventory. And specifically on the LULUCF category A, which is changes in forest and other woody biomass stocks, we have available data that is quite detailed present some inconsistencies. That is something that we are working on. I will address this immediately. Uh, however, all of the other categories uh, where is, we have no information available or is disaggregated or spread out over different institutions or it's not consistent in time series. So, so in our BUR, um, we only specifically address this uh, category A that we have the best information. Uh, however, we are making very uh, specific improvement actions uh, regarding LULUCF. We are currently uh, working on an FAO um, process uh, assisted by FAO uh, using the Collect Earth tool, which we are monitoring land use and land use changes in 2000 by uh, satellite information. And we are currently validating this information and we will like to see this to be able to include this in our next GAG inventory. Also, we, in a framework of a, GF, a GEF project that we are developing, we are taking into consideration the issue of carbon sequestration of soils, which is a very technical, very complicated issue. And of course, it relates uh, very much to, to the, the profile of uh, uh, emissions that we have in Uruguay. And last, uh, we also have engaged, as, as, as we say, on the preparation of the uh, project for the C, C, CVIT. Um, and of course, one of the main areas that we would like to see improvements and work is on the LULUCF, uh, especially on the issue of carbon pools that are currently not estimated on such a soil organic carbon. So in a way, we are, uh, we already find out some of these gaps uh, that we have, and we are looking forward to work on them uh, in the next uh, months and years. And also to this to be reflected on our next inventories and our next BUR. Regarding the issue of the combination of 1996 and 2006 IPCC guidelines, uh, we have some very specific um, work done on the on the sector of waste, where we have um, used uh, some uh, 2006 uh, emission factors. However, uh, this uh, the mass balance sector uh, method has been discouraged. And since it's produced results, if we mix those uh, those guidelines, so in our uh, 2012 GAG inventory, we have um, in, uh, 
provided with very specific uh, arrangements to, to deal with this issue. And we have come out uh, with uh, in the inventory uh, dealing only uh, with the 2006 guidelines as, well as, as is recommended. We also have uh, a mix of guidelines in the energy sectors where, for example, uh, we on the international bunkers, we use uh, IPCC default values. Currently, we are undertaking um, different actions to analyze the needs and gap for the implementation of 2006 IPC guidelines on different sectors on the inventory, not waste, as, as already said, that we have already engaged on that. And we have uh, on our interministerial um, uh, GIG working group, uh, one of the activities for this year is to um, analyze how to include uh, the 2006 IPCC guidelines for energy, industrial processes, um, in a way, we are making progress and then seeing what are the gaps and constraints that we have in order for us to, to move to 2006 uh, guidelines. We have also worked on the agricultural sector and in our next inventory, we'll be uh, pre we being prepared with uh, 2006 IPCC guidelines. We, as we say, we have also included this issue of uh, constraints and gaps for to finalize our work on 2006 guidelines in our CV um, uh, project uh, preparation document. Regarding the third issue of higher tier on key categories, um, we have included in our BUR um, our experience in developing a national factor for um, cattle uh, from entering ferment fermentation. Uh, we call it this the next factor in pastures and paddocks for non dairy cattle. This has, this has been a very important improvement in our um, emission inventory since this is one of the key strategic sector and key categories. And we have uh, already in, in the next, um, uh, this was in 2004, the first uh, GAG inventory that we used in National Factor. But on the latest um, uh, inventories, we have also achieved two uh determine adjustments for this national factor so we having better information to report um however we found we found some gaps and challenges in mover to higher methodologies uh, mainly on two issues the first of course the provision of activity data in terms of required by the guidelines for tier two um factors uh, for for a report and also the need for national uh, emission factors we understand that the conditions and zooming factors may not reflect accurately the national reality so we look also forward to have support on the areas of of emission factor for us to develop more accurate information and, and also to higher key tier in key, key categories also, on the last uh, broad uh, question that was on institutional arrangements and MRB systems, um, as we said, we have this national climate change response system where we have our uh, GAG emission working group. That is our main institutional arrangements to deal with the inventory. And in there, we have, of course, the participation of several ministries, but uh, the most important ones, of course, Ministry of Environment, Agriculture and Energy. We are also have uh, decided to create a specific MRB uh, working group uh, and that's going to start its work at the end of the year. This will not only relate to very specific uh, emission uh, related issues, but rather policy options in terms of both mitigation and adaptation in terms of MRB. But we've seen a very important work going on together between the GAG working group and the MRB working group in relation to uh, mitigation policies and actions and in emissions. And also in relation to the framework for MRB, what we are, the way we're understanding is that the, the inventory is our key. Uh, our key process for MRB, but this also relates to all these frameworks of, of departments and uh, statistics and series of information that occur uh, cross cuttingly around government. And we are seeing that the, uh, as, a, um, as a barrier or, or as a challenge, the way of integration and also translation. How do we translate uh, specific energy information to emissions and and we also are working with the agency for evaluation of policies at national at the presidential office and also the Ener the agency for e-government development our presidential office both agencies relates to this idea of having information integration and also also the evaluation of policies and we see that our mrb systems in relation to climate change policies and also mitigation measures are uh, need to be in this overall framework of evaluation policies we also like to address uh, at last 
the issue of um, some gaps in terms of uh, uh, mitigation actions MRV. We, as we have said, when we deal with the measures, we tend to look at the whole policy framework of, of actions. However, it's, it's been uh, somehow difficult when uh, to track down specific actions uh, and that needs uh, specific methodologies. Well, this was our last slide. Of course, we welcome uh, questions being addressed from the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Rapporteur. Thank you. Uruguay, actually, you already answered a lot of questions, as I see. So the floor is open for questions now. New Zealand, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Uruguay, for the presentation and also congratulations on publishing your first BUR. Um, and we also received um, the answer to our written question, um, I think it was this morning or overnight, so thanks a lot for that. And I guess I've got a bit of a follow-up question on that, which you partly addressed in, at the end of um, the presentation there. Um, so in the written answer, you told us that the establishment of an MRV system, system is considered a high priority for the country. And I understand now you've set up a an MRV working group to work on this, but uh, we were just curious to know what the next steps in developing this system might be and when you might expect it to end. Thank you. Thank you, New Zealand. Now, Sweden, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, and Uruguay, thank you very much for the uh, comprehensive presentation of, of the work. Um, I have a question regarding uh, capacity building needs that have been uh, identified in the um, uh, in the technical analysis report of your first BUR. And I wonder if these uh, capacity building needs are the same that uh, you yourself have uh, identified in your prioritization. And I also wonder if... Um, uh, if you have identified any priority needs that could be addressed in the short term, that is, uh, could they be implemented in time for the submission of your next BUR? Thank you. Brazil, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first, I wish to congratulate the distinguished representative of, Ur of Uruguay on the clarity and completeness of his presentation. Uh, Uruguay has a very successful policy of diversification of the country's energy matrix with a tremendous increased participation of renewables. Or Uruguay also has sound institutional arrangements related to climate change, particularly the national system to respond to climate change. So in the spirit of sharing best practices, could you further elaborate on those very successful policies? Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. And I'll give floor to EU for the last question. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, buenas tardes. Uh, congratulations for your first BUR. And thank you also uh, for your uh, very clear presentation and the answers that you provided to us in the written phase. You explained that uh, you are developing an assessment of gaps and constraints and needs to adopt the 2006 IPCC guidelines, and that you are also starting or planning to start uh, training activities uh, for the 2006 guidelines for the relevant uh, ministries. Uh, are you planning to use the 2006 IPCC guidelines in your next uh, BUR? First question, and more in general, if you had to, to rank or select your top three priorities related to future inventory improvements, what would this be? Thank you. Thank you, EU. Uruguay, you have the floor to answer all the questions. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Rapportu, and thank uh, all parties for your uh, very important questions. We really appreciate uh, your engagement on our, our presentation. Um, regarding uh, the first question from uh, the distinguished delegate from New Zealand, um, the issue of the MRB and the next steps. Uh, indeed, we have, uh, as we said, last year we developed our national climate change policy. In there, uh, we have several dimensions of the policy. One dimension is the dimension of implementation, where we included very specific provisions on MRB. And this, uh, from this perspective, as we said, of the transparency, but also the effectiveness of the liberation policy making. And uh, this is a framework right now for us. 
in order for us to, to develop uh, our concrete actions on this matter. We have created this working group uh, that we understand that uh, will bring specific um, proposals, specific solutions for us to, um, uh, for example, using all these frameworks of uh, reports that we have, as we said, the agricultural statistics, the, the energy balance, and how that, that we can connect those frameworks of information in order for us to track our climate change policy making and action. What we are env envisage is for us not to create another different uh, mechanism for MRB, but rather to incorporate and may have the best use of the information available that already has their budget, their processes ongoing, so how to make the best use. And this is on one side. On the other side, it relates specifically to the issue for NDC. We understand that uh, first, in, in a very high level approach, we need to have very specific um, uh, information and follow-up indicators to track down the progress of, of, our ND, of our NDC. So in a way, this is also another uh, issue that we want to take a look in this working group is uh, the things that we are presenting in our NDC, how they relate to this framework of information and how, how we start making bridges. And the third thing is that in our policy, in our national climate change policy, we have also presented some specific measures for both adaptation and mitigation that we want also to be part of this MRB system. And this relates um, the this main uh, uh, constraint that we have relates to a very specific issue that we said at last, that we have some difficulties in terms of the methodologies to use to assess progress in mitigation, very specific mitigation actions. When we deal with the energy sector or the agriculture sector, the forestry sector at a very large scale, aggregated scale, we can see that on the inventory, but we are looking to see in some very specific actions how can we track down more like in a project-based uh, approach. And this is also something that we are um, envisaged to take a look in this MRB group. Of course, uh, we uh, said that we, we have decided to create this. This will start working uh, probably at the second or third uh, trimester. I'm sorry, uh, third or fourth trimester. What we want to end first is our first NDC. We are finishing our work there. So we want this uh, uh, relation between, as we said, our indicators and our, our goals in the NDC and how they also came up as a very clear um, frame for this working group to work on. Uh, regarding the, um, the question made by distinguished delegate on Sweden, thank you very much for your question. Um, indeed, uh, we have presented some capacity building leads. So the, the ones that are presented on the on the report, uh, I believe there's, there's four uh, uh, specific capacity building needs that the TTE identify. We actually concur with those uh, with those um, capacity building needs. Uh, we have seen that the well, for example, the issue of QA and QC plan. We have also identified this in, in our in our work. Uh, of course, the use of land use uh, uh, change, uh, this is a major issue for us, as, as we have already addressed. Um, and the issue, for example, the third is just the issue what we're discussing with our colleagues here uh, of integration of information, not only to have uh, better, better uh, reporting, but also integrating the information that is already there. And also the issue of uh, designing and implementing a methodology for identifying gaps, how to further develop uh, the understanding of our gaps and what are the next steps. So this is also, and this is also very specific. Um, we have also, like, we concur with these uh, gaps, but we also have included those in, for example, our CVIT proposal. We try to engage with these uh, constraints as well, and we would like to, to for us to advance on these issues uh, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, regarding the questions from our colleague from Brazil, we thank you very much for your question. In this regard, um, uh, I understand Brazil uh, from a best practice perspective, wanted to hear our experience on uh, the issue of energy in our energy policy and also an institutional framework. Uh, regarding the energy policy, uh, we, we do believe we have there a good lesson for us to share and to, to communicate with other colleagues uh, uh, globally. Um, the, first, uh, the first main lesson of this policy is that 
is a political agreement uh, within government, but also with other political parties. We have achieved this uh, dialogue uh, of, of envisioning uh, the policy or energy policy for the future, and we have agreed this uh, also in, in an inter-party inter uh, uh, document that we have achieved in, in 2010. This energy matrix uh, established very, very relevant uh, goals uh, for 2030, but also uh, sequential goals uh, uh, that are in 2010 and 2015. So in a way it's incremental and it's, it, 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 it presents you with a, a future, but also the way to, to achieve that future in very specific steps. And um, the first thing, as I told you, was this political agreement. The second one is uh, somehow the leading uh, role of the, of the government. Uh, we, we of course, uh, very much welcome the huge uh, uh, financial investment, private financial investment that had came to Uruguay in this matter, but we understand that this has been allowed uh, because of the framework of policies and the very dedicated work of the government in leading this process to have a very clear uh, indication of where we are going. In this regard, we have received, I guess, in the last uh, 10 years uh, on this increase of wind energy, around 17% uh, of uh, GDP investment, or uh, uh, foreign investment uh, for, for wind energy. And we have also achieved these uh, very relevant numbers in terms of participation of wind and energy in the electric uh, matrix. But not only wind, we also have uh, included, uh, start to include, uh, we have a uh, uh, photovoltaic uh, energy and also uh, very important uh, relevant um, uh, use of biomass. Uh, for, for energy as well. Uh, of course, we are an agriculture uh, country, and if we also deal with biomass as a source of renewable energy, we also take care of waste, and we also take of uh, these ideas of uh, having uh, our waste being also a product for energy, so so this is very good. And we also have, as, 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 as was also mentioned before, a very strategic approach to biofuels as well. And this is also very important for us. In terms of the national institutions, yes, yeah, we believe that uh, we need to have uh, the government as, as leader of the process, but we need to have a very wide open uh, framework for all institutions, both pro public and private, to engage. And actually, the way we produce this uh, national climate change policy was indeed a process where uh, we invited um, uh, civil society, the academia, and the private sector for us to come up with a, a general uh, agreement on how do we see our policies in climate change for 2015, 50, but also very concrete steps in the middle. So having this national climate change response system in place allow us for the framework for those discussions to happen. Uh, and last, uh, the, the question uh, brought by distinguished delegate of EU. Thank you very much for for your questions. Um, regarding the 2006 guidelines for our next uh, BUR, as I already placed, we are uh, developing the agricultural sector in 2006 uh, uh, um, guidelines. As uh, and as we said, this is one of the this is the most relevant sector in terms of emissions. We are also making some improvements on LULUCF with this uh, tool of uh, by FAO uh, that gives you both the information in, in, uh, in both the, um, the, um, the guidelines. And we are currently exploring uh, how to bridge uh, our common reporting on the um, energy sector using 1996 to 2006. We, we, in this stage, we are not sure whether we will be able to include those in, in, in our inventory for 2014 that will be uh, released this year. But uh, we are doing the work right now, <laughs> trying to figure it out. And of course, when we come back to Uruguay, we will have some couple of meetings where we will be starting to see uh, how how distant we are to, to to engage on 2006 guidelines but if possible we of course looking forward for 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 making as much progress as we can uh, in this year as well and regarding uh, our priorities uh, of course the issue of lulu cf is indeed a, a very important priority i believe this is something that is cross cutting <laughs> from all our parties uh, uh, because it's a very uh, de detailed very um, characteristic very specific sector and um, we also uh, uh, see the, the the we have seen also the, uh, some improvements on the issue of waste 
but um, we can see there that we can also have some improvement there, there as well. Of course, this is not as a relevant sector in terms of emissions, so of course, as, as it relates to LULUCF, for example. And, and also, a uh, priority, as we have said, this issue of the integration of MRV. We understand that this is uh, very relevant because if we put that in place, uh, uh, we will use the, have the best use of the information that we already have, that we are already collecting, uh, and the linkages between, for example, the, the energy balance and how that relates to emissions, we can make those bridges work on. Uh, we will be uh, making also our next inventories in a much more simplified, more uh, direct uh, engagement way, uh, and also in terms of timing, because uh, for example, our energy statistics came, and then we have to start working on our emissions. But if we do this at, like at the same time, we will also be much faster in delivering our inventory as well. Thank you, Uruguay, for your presentation on all the explanations you provided. Actually, the delegates and colleagues, we have now heard from all parties scheduled for this FSC workshop. I would like to congratulate you on actively engaging in very fruitful discussions and contributing to the positive and constructive atmosphere in the room, which reflects the true spirit and principles of the international consultation and analysis process. During this workshop, we have heard a wide array of experiences from 10 non-annex one countries that span across different regions. From these discussions, we learned that even small countries can have great ambition and that the MRV system provides a foundation for solid data that could help inform policy decisions at the national level. From these presentations, we also understood the unique challenges faced by countries and that these challenges have been addressed based on each country's capacities and capabilities. Also, by participating in the ICA process, countries have benefited from the feedback received and those actions enacted before or during the preparation of the INDC are now revisited, taking into account the experience in the ICA. The questions raised during this session aim to seek further clarity on experiences, lessons learned and best practices, as well as challenges encountered, constraints and capacity building needs. The 10 countries undergoing facilitative sharing of views answered the questions they received in a transparent manner and share how, shared how the international community can assist them in continuing to improve their national MRV systems, among other needs, in order to be better prepared to address the challenges they encounter. It is our responsibility to make sure that these lessons are shared widely and the, this process accelerates our collective transition towards a low emission economy. The next round of SFV will be conducted as SBI 47 in November 2017. It is my sincere hope that this process continues to serve as an example for the international community by providing a platform where parties feel comfortable sharing their strengths and capacity building needs while simultaneously building trust and confidence in the current MRV framework. The positive experiences we have gained from this process will lay a solid foundation for the new transparency arrangements under the Paris Agreement. I thank you all.